Hi all and welcome back to the semi-finals in the Queensland High School League of Legends Championship. My name is Mitch Replays Anis and of course I'm always joined by Max Wolf on Newman. How are things today, Max? Yeah, things are very, very good and I'm excited to finally be figuring out who is going to be coming to the University of Queensland for our live event on July 20th. Yeah, of course today folks is our semi-finals so whoever wins this round of eight game we're going straight into the, or so, sorry, the quarterfinals this week. We're going to the semi-finals in our grand final our live event on July 20th. If you guys want tickets for, you can head over to the UQ Esports Facebook page and register for your free tickets for that event now. Um, so if you guys want to come to that, definitely check those out. That's yeah, definitely possible. going to be a fun event for everyone. But that said, we still need to find out who's actually going to be there. And our matchup tonight is going to be a banger of one, Maruchidor taking on Callumbale. Yeah, another banger today. we got Maruchidor, again, a team coming very strong out of, I think, uh, it was obviously late to join us in the competition, mm -hmm. so was Callumbale as well. Yes. Both these teams had a very strong run, good rosters as well coming through uh, from maybe the second half of the of the split, and uh, they've really worked it up, and so it'll be a good match to see which one of these teams is going to be at our live event. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Marujidor, we have seen on stream before. I remember yeah. highlights definitely include their mid laner, Bobby Shimerdo. Yeah. Very strong Zoe player. I'm curious to see if he'll get that this time around. As well, you know, there'll be more opportunities because it'll mm. be a best of three. Yes, Marujidor did fall short when they were here, yeah. but... You know, in a best of three, more opportunities to shine. I think since then, hopefully their macro has cleaned up a bit from when we saw them previously. Yeah, exactly. And we'll see a better showing out of them. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think um, Maruchido, especially, you know, coming from where they've, uh, obviously when we first saw them, you know, they were a very mechanically talented team. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think they obviously their core players in their AD carry, Buffy Crackers, and their mid laner, Bobby Schmurter, have those skills still available. It just depends if they can apply that with a good macro gameplay and take out these games a lot cleaner. So we don't have another 40 minutes slug like we did before. Exactly. And then Callumvale, I'm looking at them. They seem to be a very well balanced team, mm. uh, strong players across the board. Have not seen them on stream yet, so I'm excited to see yeah. what they can bring. But that said, before we get any further into anything, we want to highlight what we saw last week in our round of 16. A video package has been made, and let's take a look at it. Of course, coming through. Dark Finding connecting on the Snafu. He should go down. Go down. Under gets it with the seismic toss. Open from Tarek is only going to connect with two members as a big uh, Scorching ult does not do any damage. That said, though, member wise, Northside is looking better. Lil Kitten has joined the fight and is just cleaning up an ultimate. Holds Plungy Boy in place out of creative content who will chase him down, cut him down. Northside with the ace. And as a result, kills another captain with special three. Two flashes to get members out. A big only for Zaho does so, so much damage to Northside. And Drake is going to sweep this fight up. Punchy Boy on the plate did get jumped on, but it's not enough. I believe that was a triple for Stop New Pass. It was big ace out of Craigsley. Oh, flash yellow card does connect this time around. Punchy Boy is the target, has to flash defensively. Big ultimate coming out of Blockster, doing so much damage, but the Terracle will stop that. Here comes Katarina to the back line. All it does though is drop that Zarya passes. Not the pass, will go down to a double for the little king, but it does not matter because the team is just getting run over. Craig Lee doing so much work. A huge double out of Punchy Boy wins the fight. <laughs> Panicker by the uh, Tom Ken say in the final play, we had a bit of a talk about. But today, for our special segment, as you all know, this last patch just released Riot Games' new game mode, Teamfight Tactics. Uh, me and Max have been playing a lot of Teamfight Tactics over the past little uh, week or two. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have prepared some tier lists, in fact, for. Uh, what, oh, I have prepared some tier lists. Yeah, I'm about to say, I'm not too. sure I want my name associated quite as hey. heavily with this one. Yeah, so um, I mean, I've rated all items, all the uh, roles, and all the champions. Champions, yeah, and champions as well. So, I mean, TFT for me has been a lot of fun. Mm. I did have a tier list. I did have all these notes, 
as of this morning, I've just like chucked them in the fireplace, burned them, they're gone. My results have vastly improved since doing that. So when I say, yeah, my tier list is different, well, mine wasn't very good. Yeah. That said, though, <laughs> I'd like to see what you have shown before I'm so quick to dismiss it. As I right, so champions up first, which is yep. a little bit interesting. So the way I've kind of done these tier lists, I've kind of done them by uh, what champions, like what, what uh, champions when they come up in the shop, which ones do you want to buy immediately? So I think all those top six there in S tier are like your hyper carry. So mm -hmm. if you want to win a game, you got to have one of these six champions in your comp somewhere. So that be uh, in an elementalist comp, A Soul is one of like I think is one of the strongest uh, carries in the game even after the nerf, uh, or Cho'Gath another CC is absolutely insane. Mm -hmm. yeah. Definitely. I mean, when I look at that, I mostly agree with what you have there. I love seeing Pike in that hyper carry mm -hmm. position because I think, I nice. think early game having a Pike yeah. comp turning into an assassin comp is just too hard to handle. The only things I kind of disagree with when I look at that is I'm seeing Swain, I'm thinking he's more A, not hyper carry. Yes, his life steal is insane, but mm. I find it sometimes it's hard to get that transformation yeah. unless you've gone full shapeshifter composition. Uh, and then I'm looking at things like Ash in Essentials. I think Ash has the potential to be the hyper carry with the mm, right I build, so, yeah. right level. Similar to Draven, obviously. I think Draven's a bit more hit or miss than maybe your mm. Ash, and Sejuani as well belongs up there. I also would like to see Kale higher. I think Kale yeah. has potential to at least be A tier, maybe S tier, yeah, but so. when you're looking at the top of the list, yeah, that's pretty much spot on. Pretty much the way I've ranked them all is so each individual champion has like a role. So like, so, uh, mm -hmm. it's hard to put um, tier five or the five gold carries up high because you get them so late in the game that it's kind of hard to go, okay, I have to base my comp around that. That's why like so you see stuff like Karthus and Kale and MF are so low. Um, the biggest things, I mean, it would be nice to see the other the tier list on uh, classes before because classes are very important depending if a champion's good or not. Yes. Um, like a, a thing we had a discussion about before was the Warwick, uh, yes. down in average tier. Uh, Warwick himself isn't that great, but because his classes synergize so well with some of the hyper carries to get him popping off really well, I think um, you know he's much better than what he should be. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think um, you know the stuff in D tier. Well, those are the uh, the, the, the uh, characters you pick up to fill your comp. So they're not bad. Like, they don't do anything to your comp, yes. but they. If, if you're gonna go for a noble comp or an imperial comp or something like that or an assassin comp, uh, they are you know all characters that you need to pick up. I think one of the biggest tiers, especially one of the biggest things with this list that you might see uh, differentiate from normal games is the assassins. The assassins are quite low on the list, and that's because assassins by themselves aren't great. No, but you, the assassins are only good once you get all six, right? Yes. So even though you see stuff like a Kali down in B tier or Zed in C tier, um, even though you go, "Wow, I just got stomped by this tier three Zed and this tier three Kha'Zix." They're very good when you have all of them, but when they're just isolated, they're actually not that great. And I think they're only going to synergize them with something else. Yeah, there's also a couple more on there that I would have changed as well. Mm. I'm glad you brought the Warwick. I think I would have moved him down still to D tier as a yeah. comp filler, because that's really what he is. Also, I'd push that Morgana down to garbage. I've never seen a good Morgana yeah. actually help pop off at all. She, I think Morgana's also actually pretty nuts if you can get a good one off. If you, if you, if you position her correctly with a mm -hmm. Zeke's Herald and maybe like a um, Look of the Eye and Solari, she's yeah. really, really strong. But then why run that when you can get a Kennen going? Yeah, exactly. That, that's how yeah, I see it. Like, I just, I don't know, Morgana... That's, that's why Kennen's beat it. <laughs> exactly, that's why Kennen's really, really good as yeah, a matter of Kenan's fact. Pretty good. Um, also, I think Mord Kaiser was grossly underrated in that yeah, as yeah. we move into this. That is a little difficult to read, so, so you might have to explain this yeah, one. Yeah, so basically, I've got them rated from best uh, sort of classes or, or comps. So, the S tier is the stuff you need to send. If you're gonna win a game, you have to have one of these five comps. I've mm -hmm. put Aurelian Soul and Italy in there because their comps, it's kind of hard to explain because it's like a shapeshift, wild dragon, sorcerer, all four kind of together kind of comp, but I've just put it as Nid, Nid to A Soul, double hyper carry comp. Yep. Um, I think if you're gonna win a game, you need to have a full assa like assassins, fully procced, glacial, um, imperial procced, noble procced, all the, the wild dragons uh, yep. fully built up. Uh, and then I've got the A's as like your, your support tier. So you want to go Noble with something, or you mm -hmm. want to go Glacial with this, Imperial with this. Uh, and then the rest of it's kind of um, red ranked down from there. So good is kind of stuff that you might just get in your comp, but you shouldn't really build your comp around yeah. that. If you get it, sure, put it in and, and support one of your greater optimal choices. And I think two, if you get two greats as well, that's why I have like Wild Dragon in there. If you can activate two, of the, two or three of the greats, I think that's as good as, if not better than one of the S tier yeah. um, kind of stuff. I think the garbage ones, obviously down the bottom of the comp stuff, you just don't want to build comps around, they just simply don't work. Um, and then transition are the kind of things that I think you can build them if you're changing. So one of the classes I want to talk about, Coddle, is Pirate. Uh, I think Pirate's quite underrated, and I think yes. Pirate's not used correctly. So mm -hmm. Pirate has Pike, MF, um, Gangplank, and Graves in it. Yes. Uh, all those are kind of proc gunslingers as well. Mm -hmm. um, so you get a gunslinger a Pirate comp, which is really good. Pirate's good because you can get up to 14 gold each round. Yes. Which is huge for your economy because one of the biggest things about winning the game 
It's about getting enough gold to buy what characters you want, level up quickly, and then you get more characters on the board, exactly what you want. And I think pirate's definitely underused, mm -hmm. or it's used incorrectly. The yep. only thing that's used for pirate is between the, the second round and the fourth round. That's If you have pirate outside of those rounds, you're not doing it right. Yep. Uh, because that gold is just going to complete and utter waste. And I think once you get to round four, once you get to the pointy end of the competition where everyone's about starting to die, if you go pirate, you'll be quite low, which is good for carousel picks, right? Yeah. But it means you're at risk of falling down if you cannot drastically get a comp going. And I think pirate's very difficult to pull off unless you're going for a pirate noble. I think that's the only time it works. I think, yeah, you hit the nail on the head right there, and specifically with this tier list up. Yeah, if you're sitting in you know, your average or good tiers, those are fine early game. If yeah. you can use those to carry yourself into that late game, build up your economy without falling too low, mm. to make that shift into those heavy yeah. hitters, that is how you're going to find yourself winning more games. You can't go into TFT thinking, all right, I'm just going to hard go this comp, yeah, exactly. do or die. It doesn't work. You have to adapt, and you have to know mm. what's good at what part of the games and smoothly transition into your late game yeah. builds. That is one of the things that differentiate, you know, the average players from the good players. Exactly. It's about knowing how to use your B, C, and D tier um, kind of classes to support yes. or create an S or A tier comp. Yeah, exactly. Just that is. I believe. And please, please never go demon or, or, uh, or gunslinger. <laughs> Just completely worthless. Yeah. Like some, like, I mean, gunslinger is kind of weird because they're quite a kind of good carries. But the reason why the gunslingers are good is not because of their primary roles, because of their secondary role. Exactly. I mean, yeah, you have pirate for misfortune. Pirate yeah. for good. It's pretty much they're good because they're pirates. Pretty you get much, the yeah. gold and you get something well, I mean, that I hopefully think, keeps I think you stable. The reason why Pirate Noble is so good is because Lucian gets the Gunslinger buff Ooh, as well. Yeah. That's what's actually strong because I think Lucian's really underrated because Gunslinger is not great. Um, mm -hmm. You can u using the Pirate transition. I mean, it's also good to transition to Yordle as well, but I just don't rate Yordle that highly. It was kind of good when it first came out because the numbers were a little bit high. I think it was like 80% mischance. Yeah. But now it's been nerfed down to 50. It's kind of like it's not really worth. No, it's not. As we uh. I believe we have one more tier list to go yes. over though. It's our items. Yes, so the items are kind of split into two different tier lists. I think all the base items are really good. Um, but if I have to rate them on what you're going to pick on a carousel, you'd have the recurve bow BF sword needlessly. Then your next step down is the MR item in the tier. And then obviously giant spell. And An extra spot, which is I think is pretty nice. But I definitely think Zeke's is uh, really, really good, uh, just because it gives you a hundred, plus 160 attack speed, which is nuts, right? Yeah. Out of one item. Yeah, I mean, out of all your tier lists, I think this is the one that I agree with the most mm. that you put together here. I think, yeah, you pretty much hit the nail on the head. The only issues that were like I can make an argument for is maybe the um, Knight's Vow in specific situations where if you give that Knight proc to one of your carries just to give them that extra health. Sometimes that mm. can shift something. I just think the having, but it a, is having a PD or a um, oh, it's much better. Uh, the uh, yeah, it's much MR better. I is much better. So, so I think there's no. If you have a spatula, I think and you're using it, it to make knights vow, you're sad. Yeah, I think if you if you get a spatula and using your knights vow, I think that's incorrect usage. I think the spatula is much better used uh, to make one of those other. Um, it's either like say you're stuck on seven uh, carries and you want you know glacier. You have you have a Sejuani there as a support character. Yeah. And you may put the frozen mount on one of your other carries, and boom, there you go, glacial uh, proc. The other one, though, which I think might be a case of the most recent patch update, though, is the Runon's Hurricane, because that got hit pretty hard with mm. a nerf. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I did make this tier list a couple of days ago. So yeah, so I would probably put I that down to either drop. good. Or, I mean, I still think Runon's is okay if you get it on something like a vein, because it also procs yes. her uh, ability. Um, so I think situationally it's good, but yeah, it should be. It should be. It's, it's, it's around the same as a Hextech Gunblade now. Yeah, exactly, just that. Have you ever put the assassin proc on like your Draven or your Ash or something? I've never played assassin actually. No, no, but okay. So when you get that, like if you're against a lot of assassins, right? Yeah. You actually make your like hyper carry an assassin, so it jumps to the back line and dodges all the assassins. So all the assassins move forward. I've your carry jumps to the back and it before. just wipes them. That could actually it's, be nuts, actually. It's yeah, fantastic. It's Draven straight to back line and just yeah. kills everybody else. Yeah, because exactly, they all focus the front line and you're yeah. behind there with the lifestyle. I mean, my general thing against assassins, if you know the, the flat comp, so yeah. what you do is you put um, you put one of your melee carries behind. So you put three range and a melee in the corner, and mm -hmm. then the assassins can't jump back because they can only jump back if there's a space. Yep. So if you have your three range and the melee behind them. So I like to do the uh, noble comp and I put my um, Lyriana mm -hmm. in the back line with 
uh, Frozen Heart, or a, a melee character with Frozen Heart on it, so when the assassins jump back, they lose all their attack speed, yeah. and then your vein just uh, kills them all. Anyways, on that note, it's time to get a bit more focused on the match at hand. Maruchidor versus Calumvale. As yeah. you can see, we are three minutes away from getting into our picks and bans. It's now time to take a look at these teams. Yeah, of course. So, uh, staying on the blue side today, we have Maruchidor State High School. Up on the top side, we've got Taj McIntosh. Taj McIntosh, sorry. In the jungle, League of Yorick. In the mid lane, Bobby Schmurter. In the bot lane, we got Boofy Karakas. And in the support role, we got Snoopy. Yeah, and this is, again, a team we've seen play here before. Very strong mid laners, very strong AD carry. Mechanically, very good overall. Yeah. There were some lapses in judgment going into the late game, some unfortunate decision making. So I feel like one of their key points in victory today, if they want to win this one, mm. definitely focus up that macro. Uh, be confident in your decisions. Make sure they're the right ones. As well as I want to see them, you know, play more to their strengths, yep. uh, work more with synergies, and really focus on treating objectives and map pressure should they fall yep. behind, let's say, in the top lane, react accordingly in the bot side. Taking them on today, though, is Callum Vale. And they will be on the red side for our game one with Fifi Fan in the top lane, Yaxiorn in the jungle, Solgi, Solgi in mid lane, Wubi in IED carry, and Prince Philo on support. And those are some very unique names. They're very unique names. I think another thing about Calum Valley you want to look at is they're actually an undefeated team as well. Mm -hmm. um, they, as I said, they joined us very late, uh, and they did go on a bit of a run, which you know you could take as it is, right? I mean, they obviously they're undefeated, and being top eight undefeated is still a, a feat in itself. But if you look at the kind of caliber of opponents they're versing, because they were a little bit late, they would have been versing maybe the, the easier teams, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I think last week, obviously, two against Canterbury is still impressive, but to me as well, Canterbury wasn't one of those uh, schools that you would have expected to make the top eight anyways. Um, or not, you know, maybe not many top eight, but you know, it wasn't one of your top uh, sixteen coming into that yes. round of sixteen. Um, so I think up against Maruchidor, who's proven to be, uh, you know, quite a good side, it's going to be a big test to see how they are today, and you know, it's a good first showing on broadcast them as well. Exactly, and I mean, when I'm looking at this team, I definitely want to see them be aggressive. Yeah. Against Maruchidor, I think that's one of their key points. I want to see them actually attack the jungle, attack the top lane, try and disrupt any of those macro movements that Maruchidor mm. needs to like hone in on because I feel that was a weakness in the past yeah. for this blue side and if they can attack that effectively, um, specifically I'm looking at Yaxi Orn to have a good game, yeah. I, I think agree. they actually will be very, very solid in this one. Yeah, I mean, also you're looking at Wubi. Wubi is one of their um, mm -hmm. big carries here, the platform, the, the main player on the team. Obviously, they, I think their biggest strength is obviously going to be teamwork and cohesion across the entire team. They're all the players are about the same level, all gold, like high gold, low plat level, um, besides their support, of course, but support role. Let's, yeah. let's not go into that now. <laughs> but yeah, no, I think mostly uh, across the board, they've got a very evenly matched skill level side. So I think um, their whole thing is just going to be, sure, we're not gonna, we don't have a star player, but we're all going to do pretty well, and that should be enough to get us across the line. Yeah, exactly just that. And I definitely want to see how well this team can work as a unit, yeah. especially in a best of three where, you know, where each game gets more and more critical. How strong is your teamwork? How strong is your mental? How prepared are you really to yeah. advance to the University of Queensland to make it to the big stage because that is what is on the line with this best of three. Yeah, exactly. This is it. The July 20th live final. Whoever wins this will be coming to our live event. Mm -hmm. um, of course, a big event. And we go straight into pick and bans here with uh, Maruchidor starting us off. Yeah, Maruchidor will be on the blue side. Calumvale on the red side. And coming into this, I mean, there are a lot of key champions that I'm expecting to see either picked or banned. Uh, specifically, when you look at some of the one tricks available, as well as, you know, some of these shared champ pools, I'm curious to see if we'll see Karma get through, Zoe get through, Lux. A lot of, yeah, a lot of similarities in terms of, like, support mid laners, as well as, surprisingly, AD carry as well. I mean, it's just the Renekton ban here straight up. I think uh, Forfe, Forfe fan is a, um, Forfe fan, sorry, is a uh, off-roll player. Yes. Um, so, obviously, we have been, it must have been playing a little bit of Renekton lately, maybe in some scrims they burst. Maybe think that's an important thing to check off the board, but I think, yeah, there's a lot of uh, very easy uh, targets here for um, uh, Callum Bell. I think targeting, obviously, yeah, the, the Vayne there out of Booby Crack is a big one, and then the Zoe out of Bobby Schmurter is, you know, one of them that they really want to keep on the board. I think targeting the mid uh, AD carry duo here from Ruchidor, who they really are their hard carries, is what you really mm -hmm. want to focus on. Yeah, I'm actually really impressed with that Vayne ban coming out of Callum Bell, just because it's Vayne is one of those champions that's a shared champ pool. But Calumvale is recognized as like, you know what, we probably don't want to prioritize this, and we don't want them to prioritize this as well. So as long as we're on the red side, we will not be letting Vayne through. The Yi ban, that one I find actually kind of interesting as well, just because you don't usually associate Yi as being one of these 
tournament carries. No, he's not something you'd want to ex you'd expect to see. Sorry, in any kind of uh, tournament, but uh, it is one of uh, League, sorry League of Yorix, you know, uh, high priority picks than the Sejuani. Um, mm -hmm. I think obviously Sejuani is a little more optimal, but the Yi for uh, I mean both these jungles have very similar pulls, in fact. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, of course, getting the Yi out of the way uh, means you're not going to have that hyper carry set from the jungle, you're not going to be able to farm up, and he's going to say let's not let's 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 take it out of the jungle, let's let's turn it about the lanes, which is like what well, obviously one they want to do, they want to focus mid bot because that's where their carries are. They want to say fight me in mid lane, fight me in bot lane. Let's take the jungle out of this, let's just have a, a lane a skill matchup. Yeah, I mean, I think another reason why Maruchi Door is probably banning away that Yi as well is because, yes, League of York, similar actually to Fifi Fan, is kind of playing off roll. And Yi is in his off roll champ pool. Yi is easy to play. But it doesn't usually have that hard jungle mid synergy. Mm. Because as much as Boofy Crackers and Snoopy could be hard carries for Maruchi Door, Bobby Shimurda has been phenomenal this tournament. And I yeah. feel as if if you put League of York on something that can enable. Booby Sh uh, Bobby Shimurda, then that's fantastic for them. So I want to see a jungle coming out of Mercedor right. that has a lot of crowd control. That said, first picks coming through, the NAR was the top priority pick. I could understand that maybe in TFT, but on um, Summoner's Rift? I mean, NAR's one of those champions who's kind of been rising in priority recently. I've been playing a fair bit of NAR as well, <laughs> um, but I don't like it as a first pick just because there's so many counters available to it. And also Taj McIntosh being a bronze player, off roll a little bit as well. Um, I think he's much better on Maokai one duty. I mean, it could have been a result of, right, I don't have any other champions. I've been playing mm -hmm. a little bit of NAR recently. Can you guys trust me? I'll play some NAR. And his teammates kind of going, showing a little bit of disrespect, saying, yeah, look, we're plat, we're plat one, we're plat two. Yeah. Um, we should be fine with that. And we see the Nico in the middle lane, he have a Bombi Shmurda and the uh, Sejuani in the jungle. And there is that jungle mid synergy I was looking for, like the ability to chain that CC to a buttload of damage. There will be a lot of kill pressure post six coming out of Bobby Shimurda and League of York. Meanwhile though, back on Calumville, we haven't touched on them too much during no. this mix of bands. Kaisa Amumu, first two locked in. I mean, I really like the Kaisa first pick that takes it away from Bushy Crackers. It's a big uh, high priority pick. I, I think that, I mean, looks like uh, Murugio is just gonna pick an order, uh, mm -hmm. just because of a bot, um, which is, you know, kind of whatever, right? Um, but I, I do like the Kaiser first pick, taking it away from Buffy Crackers. He did play that, he's played that a couple times in this tournament so far and done really well on it. I think in the game we watched him play, he was able to play it as well. Um, but you yeah, know, of course, Buffy Crackers very, very strong there. Uh, but the Lux being banned away from Bobby Shimona, maybe expecting this Nico to go bot. Yeah, I mean, Lux was one of those picks as well that I feel three of the people actually play coming into this. So again, another situation I believe similar to the vein where Colin Vale's just like, we're probably not going to prioritize this, but we don't want to give it away, so we're just going to go ahead and take it off the board. I'm really curious where Callum Vale is going to be looking at for their support role at this stage. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at Prince Philo, Prince and Prince definitely Prince. seems to preference mages. Yeah. But with the Kaisa, sometimes you actually want that aggressive pick, usually with a lot of CC. I'm seeing Nautilus is still available. I'm not sure Prince Philo plays it, but I would love to see it locked in now. I mean, I think at the moment, the Ardent Sensor supports are a lot stronger than what they used to be. Mm -hmm. I think Yumi's obviously a viable option here as well. Um, maybe not so much in a Kaisa lane because she's a little bit lower range and to be targeted out. But I think, yeah, stuff like the Janna, stuff like the Lulu, or even the, um, the Sona as well that's up right now, could be very strong in the support of Prince Philo. Yeah, there's a definitely a lot of options there. If I'm Callum Vale, I'd be looking at my support right now. So I'm curious where Wooby will go. They're actually going to take, I believe that'll be rise a mid Lissandra and it'll be a rise top. Yeah, I mean, we didn't really touch on the rise. I think rise is a pick who's a lot easier to play now. You just got touched. Um, but I think Rise is not very strong at all at the moment. I think even in pro play, he's not very strong. I think his W change is very bad for him. It means you can't go after Shock anymore. Uh, it loses a lot of power and it makes him a lot harder to play. And as one of the hardest champions in the game to play, I don't know about it. Yeah, as we are waiting to see our last picks, the Ooh. Yumi had been left up all the way. So we're going to be seeing the MF Yumi lane. I'm not a fan of this. I mean, it's a very high poke lane, right? You got MF with Spell Thieves, maybe, or just uh, you go Dorian's one early on and just try poke him down with the Rain of Bullets. Um, but the Yumi in there, I'm not a big fan of that. I think uh, Yumi is not very good with MF. It's very good with the, um, uh, you know, obviously Art and Sensor com combinations, right? Um, yeah. The uh, Twitch, the Siva, et cetera, like that. Those are some of the really strong names you see with him. I do like this Lulu as well, uh, supporting the Kaiser. But into the Yumi, I definitely don't, I think the Yumi uh, into this lane wins, but I think with an MF, just not enough synergy there. Yeah, I'm I think a Morgana would be much better. Yeah, Morgana would have been fantastic, actually. I consider Morgana still to be probably the premier S-tier support yeah. at this stage. 
And to see it get through, not picked or banned by either side, is actually a bit surprising. Just because Morgana is also fairly simple to play, so it's not even yeah. as if like I'm not strong on this Morgana. It doesn't matter. Just throw your dark bindings into the bulk of them. You're bound to hit someone, right? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's definitely one of those champions where you're gonna throw whatever you want in there. If it lands, it lands. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Um, I mean, I don't know about this Lissana in the mid lane either. I think Liss is definitely a, ch a champion that is. Um, not good anymore. He got nerfed pretty hard. I don't think it's really pickable. I think there's better options if you want that safe control mage. I think Orianna's um, more viable with heavy CC ultimate. You got stuff like Malzahar as well, especially into mm -hmm. the Nico. It's a really nice matchup there. Um, you also got your your, uh, your Swain uh, as mm -hmm. well if you really want to play into Nico because his ultimate count is Nico's ultimate. Um, I think there's just a lot of better stuff you could have picked there instead of Lissandra. I like the movement in the jungle as well. Very simple, easy to execute. This is very much a Kai'Sa carry me comp yes. uh, with the Ryze versus Nar on the sidelines. I think Nar wins that lane pretty handily though, um, just because I don't know about Ryze's ability uh, to yeah. take advantage of that lane and really push his gold versus bronze advantage. Um, I still so yeah. feel like I want to see uh, Yoxiorn though really prioritize that mm. Ryze a bit more. Perhaps only because of this perceived skill matchup. I don't, yes we know Tosh McIntosh on the NAR probably should have the winning matchup, but if we're looking at these players at an individual level, I do think I prefer Fifi Fan, even in the off role coming into this. And I feel as if, it, maybe Rise has been nerfed, maybe he's not as strong as he could have been before, but a fed Rise is still a scary monster to deal with, especially in the side. Yeah, I just doubt that on Rise is one of those teams where you can actually get fed early game, especially into something like a NAR, which is a ranged carry, has an easy escape with E, both in Mega NAR form and in Mini NAR form. Where I, th I, I do just think that, I mean, obviously, I mean, any, every match is dependable. And with the spreadable um, essence flux as well now from the rise, the rune prison uh, could actually be effective as, as yep. well. But I just think, um, unless you're really uh, effective on the rise, at managing your wave up on the top side, which is a big thing about being a top lane main, it's going to be very hard to execute. And I don't know if uh, Fifa Fan can actually do this in this matchup. Yeah, I mean, that's just what I would like to if see. If it was something like an Orn, like I think yeah. Ryze can take a big advantage of that matchup because you can just auto poke all the time or a melee versus ranged, I think so. But into this Nar, I would have liked him to see something take like a Yasuo or an Aurelia and try to really hard counter and get some kills up in this lane if he has those kind of champions in his wheelhouse. Yeah, I could see that happening. But as it is right now, I mean, knowing what we know about these teams and these compositions, really, I expect most of the action to be happening around the mid lane mm. and around the bot side as well. And when I'm looking at, all right, Yumi MF with a Sejuani or Kaisa Lulu with an Amumu, I honestly feel like it all comes down to jungle difference, like which jungler yeah. can make that bigger impact in that bot lane to give that advantage going into the late game. I mean, another thing I can like actually critique about Marucci Duel's comp is the fact they've picked such one in the jungle, but they've got no melee uh, carries besides obviously Meganar, right? Which is mm -hmm. melee for 15 seconds every minute or two, which isn't that great, right? Yeah. Which means you're not able to stack up those passive procs importantly, which means you won't get the permafrost down as often. Which means the Sejuani is not really as effective. I would have loved Bobby Schmurter to play uh, a, a, um, a, an auto attack based carry in the mid lane, like the Yasuo or the Aurelia. I think he's definitely got the skills to play it. Um, mm -hmm. Mechanically, obviously, he plays Zoe, LeBlanc, these kind of carries. Um, so Yasuo and, and Aurelia aren't that far out of his skill range. Yep. And I think he's probably, I've definitely played those champions as well. I've seen him in his match history. So I don't know why he hasn't gone for a Yasuo uh, or, or a Aurelia in this situation. Because I think with the Zoe they're super, super strong. Yeah, I'm. A little bit surprised as well. That said, a fed Nico is also yeah. horrifying, and I would not be surprised if Bobby Shimmerto on also the Nico. I hope he goes for Electrocute Nico instead of um, Glacier Nico, because I've been playing some Glacier Nico, and I'm not a fan. Oh, interesting. But Glacier Nico has be kind of become that norm. I don't know. I just don't like playing Glacial. I've been playing Glacial, uh, Glacial. Nico, Glacial Ari. I don't like either of it, because it's just yeah. like, you don't have enough damage to kind of chase down. It's okay. Like It, it transitions well, and if you're playing with some other good teammates, it's good. Mm -hmm. But the amount of time I just get way too frustrated in solo kill and flex kill, and I'm sitting there like, just, just do. Just, I want to do something, and no one's doing anything to help you. And it's just very frustrating. All I'm saying is, we had a tier list on this broadcast before, and Glacial was right up there in that S tier. For TFT, <laughs> okay. Hey, I, mean, I, I think I think Glacial is very good for solo queue if you're playing in uh, <laughs> Plat Plus. Yeah. Um, but when you're playing in Bronze, when you have a, 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 a 80 carry slow, and the rest of your team just starts to run for the Alistar, it's kind of like a yeah, not as good. I mean, I have to admit, I usually go Arcane Comet Nico. That's, that's where I tend to take it, so I do agree with you to an extent. But that's also because I like to just, the big numbers. I want to do the big number I damage. I want to do the big numbers. I want to have the biggest numbers at the end of the game. 
And you get that with the comment, yeah, for sure. I think so. As we will be loading into game very shortly, we can take one last look at the players and their respective champions coming into this one. For those of you in the Twitch chat, please go ahead and take a vote who you think will win this one. We want to see more of that Twitch chat interaction coming in. Do or die right now, who do you think takes game one? I think Richard will take game one in, mm -hmm. I'm gonna say, 32 minutes. All right, well, I'm gonna be the contrarian there. I'm gonna say Calumvale is going to do it. Actually, it's not 32, I can, it'll be 30, it'll be, it'll be for a 40 minute game, actually, now I think about it. Just yep. because they've both got very good um, team fight comps. Obviously, uh, Lissandra, Amumu, really strong with the Kais if her backline carry that would be to really do really well. Um, the MF, though, they've got a huge ultimate wombo combo with MF, uh, Bobby Shimoda and uh, Sejuani as well, with a big Gnar ultimate if you can land it, and, and of course the Yumi ultimate to lock them down in that uh, bullet time from MF. So, uh, very uh, much a, a very even comp around the board, and I think, I mean, I think Marujito's definitely got it because of the player, player skill, but I think mm -hmm. comp-wise they're pretty even. Yeah, I see, I'm gonna go with Calumvale, again, just to be a bit of contrarian. I also think it's gonna be a longer game. Mm. I think protect the Kai'Sa is a simple, easy to execute strategy. And I also already like, you know, the teamwork going into that. We're moving as five. We're gonna be getting those deep wards and Taj McIntosh might be the one in trouble. He peeks around the corner and gets spotted. Bandage toss will connect. The follow-up route is there and first blood already secured. Unfortunately, it's on Prince Philo. <laughs> well, that the, uh, I mean, it's not too bad actually. It means you go back at that spell thief early, but I definitely think on the Kai'Sa it would've been much more valuable, uh, or even the rise as well, to be able to push that lead, go back to base, get his um, uh, tier almost finished actually, because you're 500 gold off a tier, which means you can back early on. Um, so that's a little bit of a missed opportunity there uh, for Callum Bell, but I think oh, he touched Rangin Dosh being caught out there, sitting at the blue buff. Um, I think I'm actually going to blame that kill on Sejuani actually, because I think League of Yorick needed to be a new traditional place when you fan out, uh, as you put one at every entrance where go from <laughs> mid top. Uh, so not mid top, top jungle mid spot uh, support in all the different ga uh, jungle entrances across the, the map, obviously mid lane in the mid lane. So I think that's a result of uh, League of Yorick not being able to get there quick enough to spread out the Yeah, and I also kind of want to be a little bit more critical of Marishidor and their lack of reaction play. Yeah. They were losing advantage top side. They did not go ahead and push the bot side, get some deep wards to track Yoxiorn. Yes, it's usually safe to assume a Mumu is going to start blue buff, but you do never know. Having that vision is so critical to the early game, especially mm. in this matchup with the Sejuani versus the Amumu, because you're going to want to track, you're going to want to counter gank in case Yoxi Orn tries to make something happen pre-6. And so without that vision, I feel as if League of York is going to be a bit blind for these first few minutes of this game. Yeah, I mean, in saying that though, the, uh, the roadside uh, calendar didn't actually put any wards down either. So mm -hmm. they're, also, no. they're also unaware of where um, the League of York is or um, vice versa. I think I want to I did not know that Summoner's Rift should change because I've not played Summoner's Rift in a long time. Yeah, it's the arcade. Yeah, well, we, there you go. It's ah. now a uh, giant Game Boy. And, uh, one of them Nintendos. One of them yeah. Nintendos, eh? Yeah, one of them Nintendos is going to go out there and catch them Pokemans on Summoner's Rift. Another Digimon? I got on a Digimon. Oh, I, I prefer Digimon as well. D but digital I'm, Monsters, my dude. Much better than Pokemon. What, what are Pokemon Monsters? Doesn't make sense. Pokemon. I don't know. I mean, I, I, I'm but pretty I, sure Nar. know what Pokemon is? Like, let's be real. I'm pretty sure Nar and Yumi could pass off as a Pokemon. I think they could go as Pokemon or Digimon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Maybe Rise as well. I don't know. The creepy <laughs> old bald one. No, I'm mean, moving. Just the Yordles. <laughs> just all the Yordles, they, they fit into the category. I uh, see both hands kind of chilling. Bobby Schmidt already a little bit of lead. He has gone for the Glacial, uh, 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 Glacial Nico here as well. I think mm -hmm. it's the better one, obviously, of course, in the team fight yeah. uh, environment. Glacial is much stronger. Yeah, and I'm curious to see, though, like, if Merchidor is able to play more as a team. Because, yes, again, we kind of wanted to see the Comet because we're looking for more of that solo carry performance out of Bobby Shimoda. But if this team has improved in playing as a unified team, then, yeah, the Glacial Argument will be much more, much more effective mm. later in the game. Already, though, some interesting positioning out of the top side as uh, that was Yogsteron who was spotted trying to invade right now. I'm kind of wanting to keep my eye around that area of the map. I'm curious if League of York might try to make a jump on this Yoxi Orn while both mid and top lane are in the blue side's priority. Yeah, I mean, I think the Nala's play there was quite interesting as well. I think it's like Scuttle going over. I think Sejuani should have definitely move to the I think early on the Nala Sejuani win the 2v2, and Bobby mm -hmm. also had mid priority there. So I think Taj saw the uh, Amumu and instantly backed off, which is one of those things when you're uh, maybe a lower skill player, you get a little bit spooked earlier on. Um, that could have been a way from Richard to kind of earn back this first blood gold, but so far, uh, Calumvale, especially up on that top side, you see a big CS lead. 
Ah, uh, being a seven chest for Talon Bowen, that's a uh, 700 gold leader, right? I think you hit the nail on the head, though, with, like, a bit unsure of himself. Mm. I mean, you've given up first blood before minions have even spawned. You're feeling behind already. You don't really want to fight, even though you have to think, well, wait a minute. No one is actually back for items yet. We're at equal level. This is still an even fight. That first death actually does not matter until items have been more bought. Exactly. So I would have liked to see more aggression out of Taz McIntosh, uh, playing the map a bit more out of Maruchidor. That said, Calumvale, they're obviously going to take what's given to them. Uh, things going pretty well for them across the board. Yeah, I mean, the other thing I want to point out, especially, you know, coming back to Todd as well, picking the Nara as well versus taking one of those more traditional um, Maokai duties on the top side, which is what happens when you see these teams for the weakest top side player, um, is, is also I don't know, a big knock for him as well, right? He's saying, look, trust me, I play the Nara, it's my favorite champion to play. It's up, let me pick it first pick. Uh, and to go down early on is, is sub optimal. I don't think I want to see this, this uh, Yumi here from Snoopy's. I mean, it, it's, it's all right, it's getting the Qs down, but he's not using his passive properly, and that's the biggest thing between the... Uh, the best Yumi players and the bad Yumi players and how often you can get out and get your passive which gives you a shield and gives you mana back. Yeah. Kind of like a mini Zerath passive. Exactly that, but at the same time though, I feel as if Boofy Crackers has been doing a great job in supplying that bot lane pressure against Wooby and Prince Philo. I mean, if you take a look at the CS, it's pretty even, which is honestly fine, I feel like, for both of these AD carries. I think they're happy with the pace that the bot lane is going. Mm. And if they want to turn this into a farm fest, each of them are happy to wait until two or three items before things really start going. Yeah, I mean, I definitely agree. I think, I mean, the MF is definitely has more damage early and the MF mm -hmm. wins that poke wall. You see a little bit of an all in here on the top side. I'm not really going to turn into anything. No, but you have to be careful. Yoxia Orn is making his way up top, trying to find a way possibly to get at Taj McIntosh, but you have Ultimate Gnar about to come down, and here he comes. Megan Gnar is actually jumping in quite aggressive. Good sidestep from Fifi Fan to avoid the stun, and really? now Yoxia Orn will make his presence known, flash out of Taj McIntosh, and that will end the exchange. Bit of an uh, interesting play up there on the top side, obviously. Uh, Taj McIntosh also having a ward on the Mumu, so he did know he was there initially. It's expired mm -hmm. now. Um, but obviously, aggressive Megana missed and doesn't have his ultimate. They're looking for the tower dive. Yaxi is actually looking for this tower dive. No flash available for Taj. Bandage Taj does connect. Follow up from Fifi Fan has the damage, and there is your second kill of the game. Now, the reason why that kill was able to come through as well is because Nar used his hop very early there. He kind of used the hop to get a bit of extra distance. Didn't uh, think about the angles and the fact that the, uh, the uh, Mimu would get there a little bit faster and probably should just say that hops a dodge skill shot. Yeah, as we cut back to mid lane there as well, Bobby Shimoda starting to do quite a significant amount of damage into Solji right there. The Tangle Barb combo is just very hard. Fortunately though, Yoxiorn has roamed up, will be looking to possibly pressure Bobby Shimoda right now. He needs to be careful and not step too far forward. The League of here as well. Yeah, League of York is there as well, but Health Bar is definitely in favor of the red side, at least until the drop is doing the Pop Blossom oh. only connects with Yoxiorn, League of York looking to follow up, deciding against it because he's a bit too low, and Yoxiorn with Flash will escape. You really need to burn that Flash. I think even he gets hit by the uh, the Ari, the Ari, the Nico root there, I feel think he's uh, jumps up fast enough for him to get out of there. So, a little bit of a cooldown wasted there from Yoxiorn, but um, of course, still okay, right? Still getting away with that little gank there. Good play though from Lee York to come at the right time, and both flashes burn out of the uh, duo for kind of Yeah, both flashes, both ultimates used as well. The Frozen Tomb was used by Solgi as a means of self-preservation and buying time for League of York to kind of show up. If this exchange were to happen again, however, both junglers have hit level six, or rather only League of York has. Fortunately for Yoxi Orn, Solji is there to sort of chase away this Shejuani. Don't want to mess with it just yet. I think Shejuani should go for an invade here. He's got top lane priority, he's got mid lane priority. Um, but I think, see, Nar here, I think if you look at the minimap here, what, what Nar's doing is really bad for his jungler. So he's got complete priority in this lane. He's got. Uh, full health as well, so you can take a little bit of a trade. Oh, back. over the go. wall coming is League of York. Solji oh, is the target. The Glacial Prism connects. Follow up damage is there, but the tower is doing so much work, and League of York actually goes down. Yeah, unfortunately, that's a trade back one for one. The decision line took a little bit too long to get out of under the tower. Obviously, a good route as well early on from Solji, so able to use his cooldowns correctly there, and this lane is falling quite behind him. Uh, gets him a little bit back into it, but um, Sejuani took a couple too many autos over time. I think it took a little bit too long to get out. Probably should just burn the flash to get out straight away, and it could even combo it into a, a flash ultimate to kind of get away. You see, again, just Taj Magnetosh being zoned off so much CS up on this top side. Yeah, Taj Magnetosh is definitely struggling as we are seeing, you know, this perceived top lane difference coming to fruition right now. Already a near 40 CS advantage, not to mention the kill in favor of Fifi Fan right now. And I feel as if 
we were talking about this before, Ryze might not be in that position he was before, but he still is going to be in a position to possibly take over these side lanes. Yeah, I mean, especially if Tyler's running or playing as aggressive as I thought he was. Obviously, I know he's a one, not one trick, so I thought he would know the range and stuff like that. Now actually has an extra 50 range compared to the uh, Ryze there, and you missed another opportunity there to Oh my ult gosh! He could have altered the Ryze back into the tower there and, and come it with a wallop to get a huge damage. Yeah. Sorry, get huge damage on him underneath the tower, but... Okay, maybe it's just the fact that, you know, these lower players, like, you see these... The difference in skill between these two players, knowing what cooldowns you can use on your champion and how effective they can be, versus someone who has it, right? I mean, I don't really know this. I'm only picking on him a little bit because obviously it's semi final for us, so your mistakes are more crucial. And I've been playing a fair bit of NAR recently as well, so I've been kind of looking at my own play and seeing how can I improve. I don't um, want to be that guy as much right now, but this is quarterfinals, not cool. semifinals. Sorry, I keep saying semifinals that. will be the winner of this one. Cal Vale right now in position to do that. They've also secured themselves an Infernal Drake, so more advantage, more snowballing going over to the red side. That said, it's only about a 200 gold differential. I feel Bobby Shimurda has been doing a good job yeah. in mitigating the damages in the mid lane, as well as League of York with the Sejuana pathing, opting for the more power farm, getting a lot of gold advantage there as well. I'm eager to see when Maruchidor pulls the trigger and we start to see League of York and Bobby Shimurda really capitalizing on this jungle mid synergy and starting to help out possibly this bot lane because I almost feel the top is a lost cause. Yeah, I think top of this point is kind of a go next. Um, but but League of York disagrees. Saying. Here comes the Realm Warp though, so an easy escape for our Fifi fan. Taking all the minions with him as well, yep. uh, which is good for him to a reset lane position. It's, it's actually kind of worse because he's shoving into Taj, but I think Taj is going to try hard to push this lane out. He definitely shouldn't be doing Oh, but. League of York actually is stuck around. We're seeing the pings come down, and no, here he comes. Glacial well. Prism is available, gets the knock up. The follow up ultimate should be saved till after the flash. Deciding not for it as Yaxion has makes his way known. Meganar is about to pop though. I feel like definitely pulled that, especially with the non ultimate available. Yeah, I'm surprised they actually opted to back away. Here we go, Bobby Schmidt makes a clutch up. Yeah, oh, he definitely oh, has it. The pop loss and used prematurely does not need it. A kill secured by this Nico. It's a little bit of a, uh, maybe a misplay maybe from, from Bobby Schmidt. Oh, rare to see that on a player of his caliber, but not knowing how much damage he'd actually do to have the low HP uh, a move there, but regardless, it means it'll be a rift out should be picked up for the side of me, which is really nice to pull in. See, I feel as if that's left Bobby Shimurda not knowing his damages and more just like surprised by how squishy the Amumu was. Maybe. Meanwhile, big plays happening in bot side. The teleport's coming through. Wild growth is placed onto Woofy as he's able to bring down Woofy Crackers. Snoopy, this Nico with no one to jump to, will go down as well. A double kill for Woofy. Yeah, and that's also a double TP in there. Both members of uh, Camembert using their teleports to come into this bot side, and the MS didn't even get the bullet time off. Uh, to combo with the Nami, with the uh, Yumi ultimate, sorry. So that's unfortunate, but it does mean it looks like this first tower should be going over here to Maruchidor in return. Um, I don't think there'll be uh, enough enemies around to actually protect it. I mean, it looks like uh, the Amumu is coming up, but. Ooh, that oh, gold from the safe. plating. But you got all the so plating good. in here, so it's. Yeah, the plating gold's so good, especially when it's being put onto Bobby Shimurda and League of Yorick as well. And there's plates on the top side. Oh, okay, he's backing off. Yeah, he's oh, actually not opting to take the plates. I mean, I, I definitely should have at least got the demolish proc and then blocked off. I mean, back he has too. the vision as well. Like, he's yeah. only now seeing that Roma Fifi fan coming back up top. I'm really worried that, like, Taj McIntosh is just so sort of out of it after yeah. that first blood. Like, the confidence is not there. And it's in times like these, we talked about this early in the season, you know, you need to work as a team. You need to build your teammates up. Yeah. Tell them, like, dude, we got you. You can keep pushing. You got this. We're going to come back and win this game. We have a fed Nico, our bot lane. Yeah, okay, they gave up a couple kills, but it's still a Yumi MF. Like, we can still bring this back later. Like, stick with it. We got to keep that momentum going in our side. Mm, I definitely like as well. He's gone recently for the uh, MR boots as well. A nice little adaption. He knows the CC is coming down, and only AP damage as well is on the top side of the map. So that's a, a nice little thing. I would have paid stuff with the Ninja Tab on that side. Yeah. At the moment right now, though, I mean, if you're Calumbale, you're feeling very good about how this game is going. Yeah. Two kills onto Wooby, already has that Storm Razor built, so I'm a little bit surprised to see that build path. That's not typically what OG, you see. Bit of an OG build path, that one. Bit of an OG build path, but it's a comfort thing, right? Yeah, I mean, we've each run into players who say, yeah, they still prefer the Storm Razor. Ah, we may disagree or, or with Or just it. the Rage Blade Rush, of course. Yeah, or the Rage Blade Rush. If, you, if you anyone doesn't know, it's a reference. Max and I, or Max started a little uh, a little community team for us casters and uh, yeah. one of the players enjoyed a, a little rage blade uh, Kaiser and got a little bit of an argument with someone about how effective it was. <laughs> yeah, That's it's all kind of inside joke there. It's all well and good though we lose anyways. It wouldn't, it wouldn't matter <laughs> yeah, what was built. Know, yeah. It wasn't matter what would be built. We would lose to these teams. Actually, we won that game, which you mean? <laughs> <laughs> what 
what you mean. <laughs> that said, right now, though, back to what is at hand. Yeah. Bobby Shimura actually potentially was looking for an all-in right there. Starting to really push that advantage. You already have the uh, Hextech item built. Me, so I feel as if maybe I want to see Shimura really start to help out the Suns. I actually want to see this mid start roaming. Yeah, I mean, I definitely, you definitely look for picks as well on uh, Yoxion. He's only got that Cinderhole completed at the moment, which means he's just got health. He's very squishy still, of course. He's got no <laughs> resistances on that memory just yet. Uh, him and Sejuani, oh, the Sejuani and the uh, Nico slows across the map would be so effective if he's maybe clear. Oh, this could be trouble. It's a double man gank, oh. but the Pop Blossom trying to turn around. Yoxion drops the curse of the Sad Mummy, but it's too little too late. We'll go down Glacial Prism connecting as well. Meanwhile, in the bot lane, here comes the combo ult, but Boofy Crackers is taking too much damage. Wooby gets his third kill. It's the same thing happened last time as well. You're saving that Yumi ultimate. In the mid lane, it looks like Solid G actually also got away as well, but the first turret does go down in the mid lane to Maruji door. Yeah, and it might be the second turret as well. Solid G can't really step up to defend this. There's too much kill pressure coming out of Lee of Yorick and Bobby Shimurda. But in response, we have a dive happening. Nothing Snoopy can do as a Nico should not have been there. Definitely not. I think the Yumi in the bot lane is uh, not very good. Mm -hmm. um, into a 2v2, the champion's not very strong by itself. And I think, again, it's the same mistake made twice in a row here for uh, Boofy Crackers in the bot lane. Um, he uses, every time the Kai's you have to wait for the Kai's ult before you pop it. Um, before you pop either Yumi ult or your Mephal ult. Pop one of them, wait for the Kai's to ulti, and then pop your other one, or reposition, etc. Right, you gotta force that Kai's to the Kai's ultimate now. It's a lower cooldown as well than your cooldowns. Um, so the fact that you got a very small window in between, also your corners are slightly shorter, but so you got a very small window before the uh, killer anything's back up again. And I think you need to make, make sure you take advantage of that window so the Kaiser isn't just hopping around that uh, big line ultimate combo and then uh, completely missing everything else. Something as well that I'm a bit surprised out of Calavales, they actually didn't rotate for that Mountain Drake after taking that bot yeah. side tower. And right now it's actually going to be more in possession of Maruchidor. That said, though, you can take a look at the map. People are making way down. We might be seeing our first proper team fight of this game around this Mountain Drake. Assist me pings are there. Bot lane is roaming up as well. Keep the advantage well for now as well. Something you got to uh, think about. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know if they'll take advantage of it, but it's good. We'll there. see what happens. Already the poke is coming down as they're posturing for this dragon. Dragon does not seem to like Calendale as he's taking some shots at a Yoxiorn there. No one's committing for the fight yet. Dragon will reset. Vision nice spawned. Base. Yeah, Nars and base waiting I mean, for that. Just go, just pull the trigger, look for a big team fight, get your all your ultimates out. Bobby Shimon is strong, he's got his cooldowns up. Uh, you got the Narf teleporting in the back line. He could be huge as well in these team fights. You should pull the trigger, look for a fight around Dragon, turn your bot lane around, turn your top lane around, you get winning gold on both of these carries. And it means this mid lane lead actually means something. Nar instead has just been sitting into the fountain for a roughly 30 seconds now. Yeah. Not even willing to go back into lane. He's waiting to make this play. League of York, though, steps forward onto Solji. And Doesn't the rise is rotated here as well. Yeah, too. actually, this could be Boofy Crackers who gets caught out. Ultimate coming from Snoopy, but it does not connect with Wooby. So already, once again, Boofy Crackers is down. Snoopy should not be able to escape either. Another double kill for Wooby. And also, League of York gets caught out by the rest of Calumvale. A huge win for the red side. I mean, once again, that's that same, not knowing how to use your ultimates properly. The Kaiser just ults around the Yumi ultimate as he's done three times before. Kills both of them because the MS now got something on top of him. And then he's a terrible AD carry when you're on top of her. Just because she has no actual damage. I think she should have definitely gone for the press the attack. Rumble. Um, Rage State? Uh, okay then. I mean, they were trying to catch out Bobby Shimurda there, but it was very telegraphed. So he's just able to walk away. Only Fifi Fan went for it and took a couple tower shots as a result. Yeah. Still no reaction out of Toss McIntosh. I mean, nothing the Nar can really do here, though. He's a little bit far behind. He's done up one of those situations when you play your Solica and your top lane, you lose the lane pretty hard, and you bugger this, I'm just going to tilt push the rest of the game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not dealing with the with the champions, I'm just going to hit the minions and the towers, and I don't care what happens. That's kind of what it looks like to me. <laughs> um, I've definitely done that at multiple times on Nar because he's such an effective split pusher, right? Yeah. Um, with that side lane pressure. Um, we'll just have to wait and see how this Murushido can maybe try and come back from this, this lead from Calumbell. The more this Kaiser gets fed, the harder it's going to be for him to come back. Yeah, already six kills on to Wubi, and it doesn't appear to be slowing down either. He has his Ginsu's completed. You have Baron coming up in a minute 30, and I feel like as if you're Murushido, it's, you can't really contest the vision around there at this stage, because if you get caught out by Solaji, you get caught out by Yoxiorn, and Wubi happens to be there, you're just done. Yeah, absolutely not. I think Maruchidor himself is really, really far behind this. Nico's still ahead, right? This Nico can still do something, but because MF's gone for this old Dark Harvest build that isn't that great anymore, that's not what makes her strong at the moment. 
Now, and because this uh, the Nas is not really rotating, does not really playing the game properly, and is like super far behind, it makes it very difficult to make his macro play without your Sejuani getting strong yet. And I think even going for, I think that's uh, a frozen heart or a frozen fist next for her is definitely the wrong call. You should be looking to get that Warmogs into that gla uh, uh, the. What's it called? The chest plate. Oh, Gargoyle, oh. Gargoyle stone plate. Gargoyle stone I think you need those two items on the Sejuani so she's super tanky when she pops them in a team fight. Uh, and without that, it's going to be a lot more difficult. That said, though, a bit of a team fight happening right now. Yoxiorn looking for that bandage toss. Actually gets rooted in place by the Tangle Barbs. Toss Macintosh is there, chucking some of London's uh, uh, towers. League of York committing to the fight. Gets a knockup, forces a flash out of Yoxiorn. No ultimates used yet. A bit of a flake coming out of Solagy. Decides the Glacial Tomb himself as Yoxiorn goes in. Curse of the Sad Mummy, holding everyone in place. But here comes Bullet Time. A huge one coming out of Goofy Crackers. Able to get two for himself. And that prompts the disengage. Yeah, and then we go. That's exactly what they want to use their comp for. Using that uh, Nico ultimate lockdown, the Yumi ultimate lockdown to get a nice MF ulti off. You see, the Killer Instinct was used already, so she couldn't dodge those cooldowns. Mm -hmm. uh, and as a result, was able to pick up a nice uh, couple kills on the MF. Oh, Fifi Fan is not where he wants to be. Ooh. So much damage returned, however, onto Boofy Crackers, but the MF stands tall. I mean, I think Snoopy as well is not playing this Nico near effect. I don't, I don't think I've ever seen him pop out um, when the MF hasn't been dead, right? He kind of just sits there, throws his Qs out, goes, I've got no mana, let's go back to base. You need to be really using those, oh, no, you mean passive. It's really, really strong. It does a lot of extra damage. You get a huge shield and you get extra mana back, right? It's a really strong passive to have. If you're not utilizing it properly, you're not utilizing this champ properly. And I feel as if, you know, momentum might actually be starting to shift now as well mm. for Marushidor. Like, they just got that big fight in the jungle within those choke points where really this team does excel because of yeah. those area of effect ultimates. I feel Calumvale, again, Wooby, wasn't doing what he was doing before. He kind of jumped in a bit prematurely. He didn't wait for those critical ultimates to be used yeah. before looking to engage. So a bit of a misstep by him. And all of a sudden, there might be hope for this blue side. Yeah, I mean, that is a huge fight getting back. It's back only to a 2k dolly. I think the majority of it is because Bomi Shimoda is so far ahead of his counterpart. I think there's a big lead in the bot lane as well. I mean, not big lead, but the CS lead having there is kind of keeping that stable. I think the biggest thing you want to look at is the, is the CS lead up on the top side. This rise is literally double the NAR CS, and he's almost at 10 CSPM. This NAR, this rise is absolutely huge, and I definitely under-messed uh, underestimated how Fifi Fan could actually play this round. Yeah, that is for sure. So the root did connect as Taj Macintosh, though, was able to make it over the wall. And he, while in mid lane, though, the Glacial Prism does come down. Wubi is the target, but is able to turn it around, at least for the moment, doing so much damage against League of Yorick. Wubi is actually going to come out on top. Yeah, unfortunately, the Tangle Bar there from Bobby Schmerder wasn't able to land. And as a result, the rest of the team rotated down from the top side with their vision around the back and just came up to back up the Kaiser, and there was nothing they could do, really. That was a little bit of a misplay by League Yorick and Bobby Schmerder, not knowing where they were to kind of uh, look for the position and then play around it that way. Um, but overall, this is a big thing for Callum Bell, and that's Marujidor kind of letting their lead slip a little bit. And I feel like, again, coming into this, one of the key points for Marujidor was they needed that jungle mid synergy. Oh, no. Boofy Crackers, though, on the flank with bullet time, gets a kill. You'll be ultimate used there as well. Um, I don't know if it was optimal. He was called what's it called Fire Crackers or something like that. Uh, I don't remember off the top of my head. Yumi ultimate. Yumi's ultimate. I haven't, that's like one of the champions. I haven't actually done all the casting practice before. I don't know the names of the abilities, but let's. I know Zoomies. Zoomies. Yeah, that's I know Zoomies. Zoomies. That's the E, I believe. Oh, I'm crazy. <laughs> but yeah, it's a big thing for again, the Marucci that the ultimate there. Once the Kaiser ult is down, geez, this bullet time is really strong, right? So the Black Cleaver now, the Shred, got double of Thali, so it's going to do a lot of damage. And this Cloud Drake will be dead prior to that ult. And yet again, the Cloud Drake curse remains. I eagerly await one of these games where there is no Cloud Drake in it. Will not be this one, perhaps in game two, as Marucci Door transitions from Cloud Drake to start shoving mid, perhaps looking for some of that Baron priority now. Mm. A couple picks have gone their way. They might be feeling more confident that they can take it. I mean, I definitely think this is a big game as well for Callum Bell. If they come over to win here, a, it gives them a bunch of confidence, but I think like, if Calumbau win, we could definitely end for a three-game series because Marujidor now in the mid-game, look at their macro stepped up quite a bit, and they're playing a lot better together as a team. You see Bommish Murder's kind of come down to join the team. Mm -hmm. I think there's a couple of things you need to work on, um, but besides that, you know, they're looking a lot stronger now as well. Uh, but I think if Marujidor can win this game, I think this is a big uh, nail on the top of Calumbau. I think, especially when you're this far ahead, you have this huge Kaiser, you have this huge rise on the top side, and this uh, Lissandra that's very optimal to start supporting this Kaiser and this Rise carries. Mm -hmm. I think if, 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 if they lose this game to Marinchador, it can be very bad for their mental, right? Because they are so far ahead right now. And if they can't capitalize on this lead, which it looks like they're getting caught out a little bit, 
and close out this game as quickly as possible. It could be one of those things where the mental starts playing hard and it's going to be very difficult to win a best of three. Yeah, and I'm looking at Wooby right now and I feel like he's been trying a bit too hard to make some of these plays happen yeah. in these past couple team fights. I'm also looking at his build and I'm not seeing that QSS. And I'm looking over at League of York and I'm looking at Snoopy and I'm looking at Bobby Shimmer and I'm seeing all this CC that they can put down onto this single target that everyone on Columbia is relying on. That said though, hey, a Baron will help and a Realm Warp to safety actually gets stopped, but it doesn't look like it will matter. A sneaky little Baron out of Calumville, that's a huge for the red side. I mean, that's one of the big things about having a fed, uh, a fed, uh, sorry, a fed Kaiser and a complete vision control over the top side and the mid lane there. Your priority, of course, because your Kaiser's ahead, top lane priority because your uh, Rise is ahead. Uh, as you get the vision down and, and through that leader vision, they could just walk in and go, hey, look, we got control of all through this area. They have no idea we're here. Mm -hmm. We got a Kaiser with Rage Blade who's going to shred through the percent health damage. We got a Rise who can just machine gun it with his abilities. Let's go and take it and then boom, there you go. That's a huge cooldown pick up for Kalen Bell and I'm loving how fed this is as well. Yeah, this is good to see, but in the jungle right now, a premature ultimate coming out of Snoopy. So that's one of the key engaged tools for Maruchidor gone. Already they're missing the Baron buff as well. Kalen Bell are setting themselves in a nice position to really start getting these lanes pushing and take this game over. Take a look at the map. Rise is already put using that to use in the mid lane. Yep. It's forcing a reaction out of Bobby Shimmerta. Meanwhile, Todd McIntosh may be getting caught out himself. Solagy unable to connect with the root. I'm getting a little worried right now for Fifi Fan. He's getting slowed in place. There are rotations coming down. How fast can Liga York get there? Bobby Shimmerta is trying to take on the 1v1, but way too much damage out of Fifi Fan secures him the kill. Here comes Liga York. He's surrounded by Tosh McIntosh as well. It's a 4v1, and Fifi Fan is not getting out of this one. That rise does so much damage. Obviously, got the Seraphs completed, Morello's completed. Look, looking towards either a Death Cap or a. Um Oh, what's that other item called? The, the movement speed uh, ability power item. Um, what is it? It's, 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 it's a Aether Wisp yeah. plus a Neil's Heal Art problem. Spellbinder. Uh, Spellbinder. Spellbinder. Yeah, Spellbinder. Could be either one of those. Obviously, it's a Death Cap there completed. He's, yeah. he's got a huge amount of damage on this Rise now. And along with the, uh, the passive shield and the uh, shield he gets from uh, the Seraphs, is going to be very hard to take down. I think. Um, these new, these refillable potions need to go ASAP though. They need to get uh, wards in there. I think potions with the Yumi are very useless. I think, I mean, I don't know. The biggest thing I think Adam Marucho for this game is I think Snoopy's Yumi has been very underwhelming. I think he's made a lot of mechanical mistakes on the champion, not being able to abuse the passive correctly. His ultimates have been all uh, out of whack and haven't really had any effect from a single Yumi ultimate yet. So I think they really want to, uh, to sell out this game because Kalen Bell here, Pushing onto their base, it's, it's, it can go one way or another, right, on some of these team fights. Mm -hmm. If this Yumi can step up on the end of a nice ultimate, I think that could be the turning point for Kalen Bell. So I want Snoopy to kind of step up and play this champion a little bit better. Yeah, I really feel as if these team fights are going to be who can get that better Wombo off. Because each team, they, if they chain their CC, they have yeah. so much area of effect damage that they can just throw down there and, you know, win the team fight then and there. So positioning is going to be getting more and more important. Uh, how you're looking to initiate in that, and as a result, abilities such as flash, uh, abilities like, you know, the teleport become even more critical for like who can get that flank, who can react in time. At the moment, Booby Crackers is down both that flash and that teleport. So if I'm Calumbale, I'm sort of like, you know, rubbing my hands like, okay, we can get this MF here and now. We need to find this pick. That said, Boopy Crackers does have that QSS build, something that Wooby does not have. No, so not at yet. the same time, Maroshidor has to be thinking, you know, all we have to do is hit this Glacial Prison onto this Kai'Sa. She is dead. BP Fan in a bit of trouble is able to Realm Warp to safely actually got the Glacial Prison out of League of York. So another critical ultimate burned by Maroshidor. I don't know, I thought if Ruth hit the Rise and that would have canceled the Realm Warp, but obviously the. Uh Tangle Barbs was a little bit wide there from Bobby Shimoda and, and Fifi Fan gets away with it. Level 16 on this ride as well, so he's absolutely huge. Yeah, as we just, wow! Yeah, like blink and he is gone. Fifi Fan, so big on this rise. 6, 2, and 2, over 150 CS up, and he just is not looking to slow down. Meanwhile, on the bot side of the map, the Siege is on at the end of that Baron buff. Callum Vale able to secure a Tier 2 tower, and now they're looking at their second Infernal Drake. Yeah, and there's a second Infernal Drake with this comp. is almost certain death here for Marushido. I think the Kaiser just scales so much for the MF and he's alone. The Rise, of course, scales extremely well into late game as well. And I think once these two carries have this extra damage... If he's hit by the Pop Blossom, good. the follow-up is there. League of York helps secure the kill. And that's a nice kill down into the top lane. The Rise falls down, but that's a huge amount of ultimates invested there to kill that Rise. And it's only going to get harder and harder from here once he gets my items completed. Looks like he's going straight for a Banshee Veil as well. 
um, which means he'll be resistant to some of the instant CC. A kind of a mini QSS for his mages there. I want to see Snoopy start attacking to the Sejuani and moving around to get wards down. Because mm -hmm. I think right now that's their biggest issue. There's no control wards on a support. And the support item is not being the support item is not being fully upgraded yet, so that means lack of vision. When you're behind, you need vision to start trying to catch up in this game. So I want to see these players sell these kind of starting items they don't really need and pick up some control wards. I also want to see Calumvale be a bit more organized in how they're pushing this lead right now. There was no need for Fifi Fan to get caught out in that situation. Yeah. He should have known the rest of his team was resetting after getting that tower and the dragon. He's pushed up up top side. Like, of course Maruchi Dorn is going to go there. There's no yeah. reason for them to be anywhere else. And he has no business being there on his own. Yeah, of course. I mean, like, it's just, he's got the pressure for the Infernal Draken. He mm -hmm. didn't need to be there. He just back off. Team gets the Infernal Draken, reset, push the lanes up, win the game. It's very simple. Play around this next Baron that's coming up. I think this next Baron is the biggest thing. And I think Calum Baron in perfect position to take it and end the game. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was kind of like, like is this is again the macro macro from Marujido really needs to be improved on. I see no wards in inventories. I see no um, you know playing around lane pressure with cars, especially he should be down that bolt line using that teleport advantage he's got, right? Um, he should be looking to create pressure in these sides, and they're just not doing it. I think Nico with Ignite is gonna kind of uh, fall in. I already touched him earlier, um, but I think you know it's definitely a, a wasted mm -hmm. summoner spell on the Nico. You don't really do your damage to the late game. I think the teleport's much better for maintaining lane support. I think Barrier or, or Teleport are pretty much your only options on one of these kind sort of control main supporty champions. I just don't think they have enough damage in their combo late game to kind of win this, and I think it's getting to that point where they're just a little bit too far behind, they're not scaled up enough, and then they're just making them just fight. Yeah, that said though, they would have a chance if they pick that fight with Solagy not there. Yes, Teleport yeah. is available at the Lysandra, but that still leaves a window also, you have Fifi Fan down on the bot side, so Colin Bale trying to set up this 1v1 as Maruchidor is 5 right? is grouped together. Yeah, Baron's available and Maruchidor is trying to force take it. Because yeah. you get absolutely wiped and lose the game off that. But the, unless Colin Bale, you know, doesn't step up. Like, Colin Bale does know this is happening. The pings are there. Rise what? Can yeah, Rise can keep him in. Yaxi Horn waiting for his chance. Now Rise is using the teleport, so the teleport's burned. Mercy Door has to back out. I do not think they want this fight, but Baron's already down to a quarter. Solagy is stepping up. He's going to contest it. Big 10 combo ults coming through. As Fifi Fan is able to take down this Nico. The bullet time through the center of everyone it does not secure himself a kill. And all of a sudden, Calabell is jumping in hard on this re engage. Fifi Fan coming up huge, gets himself the triple and the quadra to boot. And with that, Calabell should win this game. That is huge. I think Calendar should take out game one of this series. See the Rise T ult coming in as well. Ruby didn't go down, so they could have even gone for that Baron there if they want, but I think they'll just march through the game with these Death Timers and take the first game. Yeah, at this stage, this should definitely do it. Death Timer sitting at 20 seconds as the entirety of Catlin Vale minus Prince Philo are making their way into the base. That said, though, they got to be working as a team. I don't think they need to worry about that second inhibitor. First Nexus Tower goes down, second one not long after, yeah, and with yeah. eight seconds, that is definitely game. Callum Bale moves up in this series, one to zero. As you see, the victory screen finally come through. Callum Bale kind of, kind of torn go for some, maybe some kills on the little tower. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and the Nexus finally explodes. That new little arcade animation there, and Callum Bale up 1-0 in this series. Of course, this is a best of three, right? Unlike mm -hmm. every other week, we've had best of ones, uh, obviously last week as well. Yeah. But in the quarterfinals, we have Callum Bale up 1-0. Uh, against Maruchido High School. And I think there are a couple talking points to this game. I mm -hmm. think, uh, most definitely, I think the Nile was a bit of a mistake from Taj McIntosh. Yeah. I think you need to ban the Rise out as well. Make sure you get a melee versus a melee matchup in there. Get a tank so he can't abuse you, can't get a big CS lead. Play more conflict as well. Tell him what you're doing. I think there's enough communication about saying, hey, Taj, uh, as of the search, going, hey, I'm here on the top side. We can pressure this. You don't have to back off. Stay in XP range at least. Pressure those minions. You're fine here. I think he kind of just sat back at his tower and other wave was pushed and just lost all the CS and all the gold. Yeah, I feel top lane was lost the minute he died at level one. Yeah. And the minute he was caught out there, unfortunately, it didn't appear as if his mental recovered. That said, though, when I'm looking at Calumville, I feel like they had that game won very early, but then just missteps, not understanding mm. when to push, when to retreat, kind of extended that game and left yeah. some openings for Maruchidor to get back into this one. I'm not sure if we have some replays right now from our first game. Um, if we do, yeah, we do have a couple replays. So I'd like to take a look at those for sure, just to see you know how we can break down these fights and what was really happening in them. Um, yeah, of course. Because these team fights, like they were crazy. When you have a Wombo combo sort of comp out of Maruchidor like yeah. we do and seeing it work sometimes and seeing it not work other times It's really important to sort of break down what they were doing correctly and what they weren't as here we go Action already. This was the one that actually Maruchidor did win. Oh, yes, it's kind of so they were contesting over the blue buff. Bombi Shmurda is definitely the biggest thing in this game You see he was very strong. He was pretty much Maruchidor's only way back into the game mm -hmm. um, 
you know, unfortunately, this is a really nice ult here from uh, Bobby Shimoda. You see, he started the Nico ult around the corner, so he didn't actually come in vision because it's out of vision. The, uh, <laughs> the, sorry, the Kaiser ult of an Isdara, unfortunately, just went straight into, right into it. Yeah. Hits by the Pop Blossom, uh, and then followed by the MF ulti as well. Again, Yumi ult's been flying wide there, which is a little bit unfortunate, but... Uh, again, I think Fefe Fan was probably just way too strong in this matchup. Mm -hmm. He should have been a lot stronger, should have been a lot more confident. I think that would have allowed him to win the game a lot faster. Yep. Um, but I, I do think like it's a lack of that that kind of cost in this game. And I think also, um, I mean, the Snoopy as well as Yumi was was very very weak. I think he has no knowledge of how to play the champion like really whatsoever. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like oh I can play the champion. You press W and you sit there. But he wasn't using the passive. He didn't use any ultimates. I think that they want to improve in this game, they will look towards the bot side and the top line. Yeah, that said too, we also have footage from our t final team fight, the one around Baron that ended it all, and this was just a case of Fifi fan coming up huge. Yeah, I mean, this is obviously, Lissandra is one of those uh, champions that's really good at stopping your Barons, uh, and then of course, Fifi fan as well, coming in late from the TP, so much damage already, uh, kills everyone, and obviously Yumi there, last one to fall down. Once mm -hmm. your MF dies, you pretty much die as well. And this is a result of that's it. Death time is too high. They kind of went for this player on the Baron to kind of take it back, and and that was kind of the end of the game. I mean, the bullet time not securing any kills, as well as the clutch wild growth actually to yeah. save Boofy Crackers. I think he was on like 20 health. The wild mm. growth came through, and all of a sudden, you know, yeah, Kaisa is still there, yeah, just Kaisa, yeah. wailing on people. As you know, you have that AD carry just running straight through the center as well. I'm sorry, Fifi fan on the rise. Yeah, it yeah. was just. Everyone was doing so much damage at the end, and when Marucci Doors Wombo did not pull through, like you said, they missed their opportunity for that damage to really come through. Exactly. They lose the fight, and they lose game one. We will now be taking, though, a quick three-minute break, and when we come back, game two will be coming right at you, so please do not go anywhere.
Hey guys, and welcome back to game two of the Queensland High School League Championship quarterfinals, yeah. round of eight. So the winners of this game will be attending our live final on July 25th here at UQ. Currently, Carlin Vale lead the series 1-0. I was taking a, a quick, I think it was a 30-minute victory here mm -hmm. uh, against uh, Marujito, and we'll be jumping in uh, to the pick and ban phase, the teams deciding to swap sides. Yeah, the teams have decided to swap sides, so it's Callum Bale, who are one game up on the blue side, taking on Marujidor, who is now on the red side. Do or die time for them. If they want to make it to the big semi-final final event, they need to start winning, and they need to start winning now. Callum Bale on the other side, one more nexus away from that live show. Exactly. I think the biggest thing is obviously uh, for, uh, sorry, not Callum Bale, for Marujidor to improve on coming into game two, right? This is it. This is do or die. They mm -hmm. lose this, that's it. They're out. All the work they've done beforehand, gone. Completely, yep. boom, disappeared. Uh, and this is Callum Bale's chance to really prove we are contending here. Obviously, you know, they have an undefeated run to mm -hmm. now. They haven't lost a game yet. Yep. But, you know, obviously the caliber of opponents is a little bit questionable. Here, absolutely no question about it. They're versing a quality side here in Marujidor. And they've been performing quite well. Yeah, I mean, they definitely had control of the map from start to finish. Like, from that very first first blood, when they caught out yeah. Taj, McIntosh, they had control of the game. Yes, there were some slip-ups where they almost gave it back up. But overall, from what I'm seeing, on a skill level, they definitely appear to be the better yeah. game one. Game two, though, anything can happen. But mm. the way how things are going, I'm actually getting more and more excited about this possibility of perhaps a Callum Vale versus KG4 Grand Final. Yeah, that could be very exciting, I think. Uh, I mean, KG4, if you guys I know, are on a, on a completely undefeated team, and they've been here for a while. Mm -hmm. We yet still haven't seen them on broadcast, which is very odd. And, <laughs> I mean, depending how they go in their match against Somerset today, it's going to see if, who will be playing in those live finals. I mean, yeah. I'm personally rooting for Somerset. I did go to school there, of course, so a little bit of bias there. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, let's see who wins. KG4 haven't lost yet, and... Yeah, I'd assume yeah. to keep winning through as well. I assume KG4 definitely are that team to beat right now. Obviously, if we hear the results on this broadcast, we will present it to you at the moment. We have no idea how they're happening yeah. to be going there. It is, you know, the better choice would be for KG4, but please do not bet on high school esports. Um, I just feel <laughs> as if, you know, I'm excited to see KG4 on yeah. the stage, see, like, why this team has been so talked up. Callendale has sort of been that silent, undefeated team, yeah. like, completely under the radar. And I'm looking at them right now taking down a quarterfinal team perhaps in two games if they play at this same caliber again. And I'm like, we have a shot. Like Queensland yeah. League of Legends, the top end right now, it's looking very good. Yeah, it's looking very good coming into those national finals. Obviously, mm -hmm. those are across the board here for the meta competition, the other one that's been going on. Don't talk about them, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course, uh, whoever wins this competition, will we go into another uh, uh, high school nationals final where you get to play <laughs> against all the finalists from all the other states? Seeing who is the national Australian champion, or an Australian slash New Zealand champion. Yes, right? there is the New Zealand Because New as Zealand well. are actually your reigning champions currently of the high school tournament. Yeah, it's... they're good. Have you seen some of what they've been? Yeah, I believe they have, a, they have a full challenger lineup. So yeah, they're they very have, strong. They have some very strong teams coming out of New Zealand. That said, though, you know, I like our Queensland teams. I think yes. we have a chance. And I I'm think from, we do. And from what we're seeing right here, I'm excited to see how they would go. Yeah. Obviously, when we get to our top four, that's really when the gloves are going to come off and mm. the punches will be thrown. I'm excited to see if Marujidor can come back into it. As we take a, another look at our round of 16, some of those results that we saw right there. I mean, some of the favorites did go down. Marsden had been on stream yeah. a couple times. They lost to KG4, unfortunately. I, mean, I think Chisholm's definitely one of the big ones that went down. Chisholm, mm -hmm. of course, uh, one of our premier uh, esports programs being run by a school. Obviously, unfortunately, couldn't get the results here, but I, I think what they're doing back at Chisholm is really good, and I, they should be a, a team when we continue this in future years that you see that their esports program really grow and then kind of make these finals and then representing yep. Queensland and stuff like that in the future. Um, I think that was one of the biggest upsets. I think, uh, of course, the crazy Northside game was a fantastic series. I think either of those teams, yeah. whoever won that series, would have been very happy oh. to come through. I think both of them were quite deserving of a spot. And then they go up against SPS Legacy, who has also been sort of like one of these top dogs yeah, the of the whole tournament time, right now. Right? Yeah, so like, I was kind of matchups across the board. Like I was kind of thinking, watching Craigslee two versus Northside, whoever wins this, all right, we're going to be seeing them again in the semifinals. But, but now they're against SPS Legacy. Oh, that series would be a lot of fun. Yeah, I think to that's get gonna be very close. Same on. thing with Merrimack versus SPCC Colors. Yeah, of course, yeah. Colors, that team that came out of the gate swinging, looked like the best team by far, and then started to falter towards the end. I mean, they got through KG3, so I feel as if they're up for the challenge. But Merrimack, mm. they were the team that beat Chisholm. So, whew, a lot of a lot of big names still in this tournament. A, a lot, lot of big of, stories as a well. A lot of big stories as well. But for all these teams that have been knocked out, fret not. There still is our ECA event. Yeah, we have happening. another event being hosted here by UQ Unions and University of Queensland. Of course, we'll be running this uh, Road to the ECA tournament. We see mm -hmm. we're just about to jump into Champion Select here as well. 
So um, look if up you guys more want to register, make sure you head over to the UQU website yep. or um, uh, UQU page. Esports. UQU Esports, sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, of course, register your school if you're interested in that. Hit up Tanil or Jet. Yep. Um, yeah, those are the people you want to hit up for those new uh, tournament coming out because there will be a live final as well at the Echo here uh, in August. Yeah. Free entries, of course, mm -hmm. uh, if you're in the finals, the live finals for that. Uh, so big prize on the line as well. Yeah, um, good fun. Yeah, good good fun, fun online. It's actually yeah, twelve teams I believe get selected to play on stage yes. at Eka. So the top twelve teams. Be a big day of casting. Yeah, it'll be a, it'll be a few fun days of casting <laughs> for us for sure. And I mean, it also means you don't need to hit top four. So a lot of these yeah, teams that might course. not make it all the way there. I'm looking at your Chisels. I'm looking at you know your Somersets perhaps. Yes, perhaps. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hey, they'll have another chance to play yeah. on a big stage in front of a crowd. So fret not. Please sign up today. UQU Esports. That said, I believe we are about to head into pick and bands. Callumvale, Maruchidor, game number two. Who do you want to see prioritize? Where do you want to see this picks and band go? Okay, so I think Maruchidor, what well, they need to improve on is they need to work on their top side matchup and their bot lane. Mm -hmm. So I think one of the biggest faults was Buffy Crackers and uh, Snoopy uh, were on the MF and the Yumi. I think that was something they need to improve on uh, because I think they definitely needed um, they, need, they needed the uh, attacks, uh, the uh, auto attacking carry. I think MF got outscaled way too hard by the Kaiser. They couldn't get a big enough lead in that 2v2. And I don't want to see Snoopy on uh, Yumi again. I think that champion is probably not for him. I also want to see Tarsh McIntosh on a, on a simple tank. Maokai, Judy, Orn, Maokai, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Malphite, uh, Tom Kent. Like one of these very easy to play top lane carries. You're not going to get uh, outscaled too hard. I want to see him ban away the rise as well from uh, Fefe Fan. Let him have the Rengar because the Rengar's not going to scale that. And, uh, the, sorry, the Rengar, the Renekton. Because the Renekton's not going to scale late into the game. Uh, I like this ban already. Yeah, I mean, the Zoe ban makes sense. Bobby Shimoda on that Zoe. We've seen him in the highlight packages time and time again yeah. making these crazy plays. So I feel as if, unfortunately for Bobby, he won't be getting Zoe anymore throughout the entirety of this tournament. Rise being taken away from Fifi Fan. We saw what he can do. You were a little dismissive of it at first, but I had faith in the Rise. I got my wish. Probably not going to be seeing that again anymore throughout this tournament. I don't think so, yeah. Um, and Tom Kench, though, Tosh McIntosh, that is, you know, his safest pick. I feel as if Calumvale does mm. recognize he probably wants to play a tank, so we're going to get rid of his favorite one. Yeah. The Renekton ban still confuses me. I mean, obviously, Renekton is one of those champions where, especially Fefe Fan, can really abuse Taj McIntosh up in the top side. Renekton's really good at big lane bully. And uh, of course, he's not very, maybe as confident taking Renar into that matchup. It's a really bad Nar matchup. He's a Nar one trick, right? I still don't think you should pick Nar, but it's even the tanks, right, still get uh, shredded hit by the Renekton. As lastly, we're seeing the Sivir ban. So that's going to be taken away from Boofy Crackers. I believe his solo queue win rate on the Sivir is in the high 70s. Which is nice. Which is a very good win rate. Yes. That's one of those things where it's like, okay, uh, if we get Sivir, we're probably going to win this one. In a do or die situation, Bane I'm sure he would have loved it. Bane's up here. Bane is up, but Calumvale has priority. I actually yeah. would not be surprised if they pick up that Bane for the Wooby. Maybe. I think Wooby did very well on the Kaisa lock. I think, think Kaisa is really strong. What I want to actually see out of Camembert to win this game, I want to make sure they secure a winning matchup for Fei Fei in the top lane. Uh, I think they want to also get Suliji on a, on a safe control mage there as mm -hmm. well in the mid lane. I think uh, minimize the lead that Bommy Schmurder can make in lane because that's only uh, their saving grace. And make sure you also got a decent bot lane matchup here so you can still survive and not let that lead, uh, uh, maybe not give Boofy Kaka the opportunity to take a lead. Hopefully they don't go for the MF again. I really wanted to take uh, an auto attack based carry. Obviously his vein is up as well. I think Ezreal as well, something very nice to the vein locked in as well in response. I actually want to see Calumvale double down and go for a protect the Wooby comp at the moment. Lee of York should be looking at that Hecarim right now. That is a strong flex pick. So I, think could Sejuani, go to top. I think the Sejuani is still good enough. He played well on Sejuani, missed a couple old demons here and there, but I still think around a vein, Sejuani looks a lot better than the Hecarim. I think, don't think Hecarim works very well with a vein. Yep. Um, but, you know, it's their do or die, right? If they lose this game, they're out. They're completely gone. So pick your comfort, pick what you want to play, and hopefully that'll be enough to get you over the line. Yeah, I just, again, I would have preferred the tank. I feel as if you want to play to your team strengths as well, which yeah. for the case of Marujidor on paper, that should be Bobby Shmurda, that should be Boofy Crackers. When you're taking that Hecarim, that's sort of like, okay, we're going to actually put our chips onto League of York on this Hecarim to just dominate this early game. Yox Yorn. Felt pretty good on the Amumu before. It's going to go ahead and lock that in again. So I mean, it's a very safe pick if you don't know what you're doing in the jungle mm -hmm. role. I think he's auto filled as well, right? Oh no, maybe no, he's not. He's not, but, but Amumu's in his way. But the point is, Amumu's easy to play. You have a really good AOE ultimate. You got a dash as well to engage. I think it's mm -hmm. very safe, very nice, and to get it off the board is optimal. I want to see the karma right here. I feel like if you don't lock in the karma, it's going to be taken away, and that yes, it might reveal yeah. that you're going for the protect the Kaisa comp, but. I mean, Karma's nuts, right? Karma, Karma would be so good. really, really overbuffed in 9-12. 
Got a little bit of a taken back on the 913, doesn't really hurt her win rate too much. Another glacial midlander move for Bobby Schmurter here in the RA. Yeah, the RA would be an interesting pick. I was actually kind of hoping for the LeBlanc, mm. because again, I feel like it's going to be- into Karma, the yeah, LeBlanc kind of gets hard stomped. So I think, I mean, especially into the Karma, I think maybe options for that would have been good into her. It's really hard to pick anything. I mean, I think like a, a roaming mage, right? If you can play a Talia or an Aurelian Soul, I would have really liked to see that. Aurelian Soul is probably my favorite pick into any control mage because you just push them out of lane, you roam, you get kills on the side lane. I think Lux as well would have been decent as a Karma. Mm -hmm. um, but going with the Ari, I mean, she is one of those roaming, uh, roaming control mages as well. Uh, but you kind of have to wait to get some uh, wave clear to kind of push your lead properly. You know who I would have liked actually? And you might just come straight down and say, no, that would never work, that's terrible. I would have loved to see the Zed actually yeah. into the Karma. I, mean, I, I feel think like that just gets like obviously common just presses W and E and then yeah. you, it's a little bit harder to but, but it's yeah, the roaming, but good. like the roaming, yeah. the side lane pressure, like yeah, you're not gonna win that mid lane, but as Zed, you have that potential to possibly blow up that Kaisa. I mean or Kulana as well, right? Mm. The new the new champion I mean we didn't actually talk about her yet, but yeah, obviously Kulana's I mean I think Kulana's just because uh the T Y Titan come out, just everyone forgot this new assassin's coming yeah, out. Yeah. So no one's doing like What's this League of Legends thing? I'm playing Tifa Tactics. Dude, I have a hard yeah. time remembering her name. <laughs> Queen Let alone. Like, Queen, what's that again? Oh, that new champion. Yeah, yeah right. I believe. No, I mean, I've been playing a couple of games of her. She <laughs> seems okay. Very difficult to play, I reckon, but yeah. she's fun. A lot of buttons to press. She does look very difficult to play. Like, have you found her she's better mid lane or top lane? Definitely mid lane. Because you can beat your um Rizal. I mean, both good, but I think Assassin's always is better than mid lane because yeah. tanks kinda hard to take advantage of. And she's really good at skirmishing because of her W reset, right? Exactly. Plus in the mid lane, I think she has the best access to all of her oh, different she has, abilities. She's the same in, in in both of them. I guess. No, because okay. if you just click near the water, it'll give you the water one. You click it near the water, give you that one. And the bush okay. there, of course, on top oh, of Oh, so you have to click near it, you don't click actively you have to click, on it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the brush in the mid lane, you have to actually click actively on it, mm. but it will just click on, it will take the closest uh, resource wherever you press your W. That said, though, we have gone through our second round of bans. We have seen some picks as well. You should be having your own know, Tosh McIntosh has been put on that Cyan duty. We Ooh. were silently hoping for that uh, in between these games, and yep. that has been locked in. I think that is fantastic for Maruchidor, but in response, the Darius onto Fifi fan, this is one of his like main champions. We've seen Darius's before. We've always been like, okay, is this gonna be the hit Darius that the one V5s is gonna be the miss Darius that you know doesn't do anything all game? I have a strong feeling this is gonna be that hit Darius. Yeah, I mean, as if you go any if you're judging anything off last game, it was a huge uh topside whitewash for FIFA fan. Darius is really good into these um, big tanks. Once you get a big lead on her, once you mm -hmm. uh, can get that bleed stacks up, he's going to just decimate them early game and late game. Uh, and I think in these team fights, he can get a nice ultimate chain off. It's going to be very difficult for anyone to kind of deal with him. However, Taj Magnetosh on this side means he's still going to be relevant even if he falls behind. Unlike the Nar, yep. where if you're full behind, you're not as relevant. It's kind of hard to come back into these games. I think the Darius is still uh, are playable. Uh, I also think that the... Um, the Hecarim here is easy to play on this Vayne Zillion bot lane. I like this Vayne Zillion. Mm -hmm. Keep the Vayne aligned along in the team fights. Vayne is a counter to the Kaiser, and I think the Zillion beats Lulu with these uh, bombs if you can land them correctly. Yeah, and I'm very happy to see Snoopy actually on the Zillion as well. It is one of his comfort picks. I believe it is his most played champion, as a matter of fact. As opposed to that Yumi, which he, unfortunately, I don't believe he has as much experience on. No. So. Do or die situation. All right, let's not try these fancy new things. Let's stick with what we know. Let's play this safe. Let's get the zillion for Snoopy. Let's put Tosh McIntosh on that Scion duty. Let's go ahead and put our eggs in the Ari basket, perhaps, and try and get this Ari fed. Bobby Sh um, Boofy Crackers on the vein as well. Like, this is what you want. Yeah, I mean, interesting choice in Summon as well. He's gone for the, uh, the teleport on the Ari, uh, mm -hmm. which. I mean, obviously double TP is decent, but I still think Ari is better with uh, an Ignite here or a Cleanse into the Karma Amumu. I think the Cleanse, there's so much CC uh, from the Lulu Karma and Amumu. You don't want to just instantly remove, right, with, from the Ari, uh, since she's got so much damage, so much roaming, and so much movement. Once you get locked down, if you can't get your mobility spells off, it's going to be very difficult for her to do anything. Yeah, that is very, very true. But and again, though, one of the things about Ari, though, is they have to be very good at finding those odd engages, like mm. the flanks or sometimes, you know, hitting that charm and then blowing someone up that, okay, yeah, if you lock her down, she's very easy to bring down, similar to the Vayne, but you still have to hit her. You still have to connect with yeah. that bandage toss. You still have to, really, it's only the bandage toss, actually, as a matter of fact. I mean, maybe <laughs> if she goes in too deep and gets knocked up yeah. by that wild growth. I feel as if there's a lot of outplay opportunity right now for Bobby Shimoda. I, I agree. I think, um, I mean, obviously, it depends how good Solo G is on this Karma. Karma's mm -hmm. very safe, and from the, her, uh, sorry, his, um, 
Game one. Uh, game one playing on Lissandra. Mm -hmm. He shows he can play that style where he can he can kind of stay even with Bombi Shimoda. Sorry, he falls behind in CS, right? But he doesn't get full behind in kills. Doesn't give Bombi Shimoda this huge lane priority lead to just roam around. I think Karma's yeah. wave clear is a little bit uh, less than Lissandra's, mm -hmm. uh, but she doesn't have as many mana problems. So it depends how well they can use those empowered Qs uh, to clear out these waves and, and how well this Ori can punish. I think you hit the nail on the head though when it came to Soul G's playstyle. Like, he, did, he didn't win lane, but he didn't lose lane. And when you're against sort of this hyper-carry mindset that Bobby Shimmerta brings to the table, yeah. that's what you need to do to allow, you know, your side to find those advantages and get the lead. In game one, Wooby got, it was like six kills in 12 minutes, and then Fifi Fan at the end of the game had like 150 CS advantage and had kills as well. And so I didn't lose lane, my other lanes won. That's two to zero, we win game. I mean, especially when he's playing Lissandra or Calm, these more supported mm -hmm. mages, they don't have that big damage. They're very disruptive, they have a lot of CC, they're just annoying to deal with, right? And I mean, Karma especially is very annoying right now with her big speed boost and the, uh, her, her R plus Mantra. No, Mantra plus, yeah. I don't know what it is, Shield or something, else. I don't know. Good champion, they're very strong, it's a big movement speed. A mini Civ ulti, you could call yes. it. Um, it has been nerfed recently though. The movement speed was nerfed. No, not R, just on the W itself. So the, yeah, yeah, yeah. the W, the E. So yeah. you, now she just presses E, her shield movement speed duration is 1.5 seconds. With As the mantra plus E, it's still that 2.5, 3.5, yeah. whatever it is. I mean, it's still ridiculous. I it, mean, yeah, it's still... <laughs> see, see the, see, see the Hecarim reward? Let's just run away from this one. I mean, given how fast the Hecarim is and the fact that the Karma can still outrun it is very impressive. And is it even a nerf when it was only active for one patch? Mm, yeah, not really. <laughs> yeah, it was just a case of like, we're going to try this out. No, Ooh, bring it back. Bit too OP. Bring <laughs> it back as we are going to be getting ready to go in one minute and 15 seconds. We can take one last look at these players and the champions they selected. This time, Snoopy is playing Zillion, not the ward icon. Yeah, not the ward icon. He's playing an actual champion this game. <laughs> I mean, for according to these teams, okay, this is do and die from regional. If they lose this game, that's it. They're gone out, mm -hmm. finished. That's it. Done. Calm down, move on to our live finals. Um, and, and that's all she wrote, right? Yep. If uh, Maruchidor can come back from this, right? It means we're going one, one, means we're going to game three. It means that Maruchidor have learnt from game one. I still don't know if they've completely learnt yet. I don't know if they've fully, I don't think I'm fully happy with this comp yet. Um, yeah. I'm, I think, I think this Fefe, I think the Darius here for Fefe fan is going to be way too strong for Taj Macintosh to deal with. And I think that could be where they uh, push their lead through, obviously through this big topside lead again. Um, just because Yox Orn has been playing, Yox Orn, sorry, has been playing through that lane quite, uh, quite effectively. Mm -hmm. um, but overall, I mean, it, it could go either way, right? It's these elimination finals. Pressure gets someone's head, their mental gets reset. Yep. I hope the biggest thing for me is they can just reset the game one, just say, like, this is it. It's a clean slate, 0-0 zero, zero in the series. Try yep. to ignore the pressure and just play the game. Exactly. I mean, when I'm looking at Maruchidor right now, I feel so much of this is going to be on League of York on this Hecarim, just because of how, like, tipsy-turvy a Hecarim can be. Like, yeah. either they hard win you the game, or they don't do anything at all. And unfortunately for Marujidor, if this is the case where Hecarim falls behind and is in a similar position that Taj McIntosh was in the past on this NAR, and you just have this champion who's kind of there, mm. they're not going to be able to really put this team comp together. So yeah. I need to see League of York playing more aggressive than he did in game one, finding more opportunities, getting that lead, possibly snowballing it, because against an Amumu, you should be the one controlling that jungle tempo. Yeah, I mean, especially against the Amumu, you have cleared much faster than the Yorick, you should be getting double scuttle straight away, pressuring your side lanes, pressuring this mid lane, getting this RA ahead, and hopefully winning the game for the few teams. Yeah, hopefully doing just that, but we are on the Rift. Both teams have learned their lessons from the first game around, and each are actually moving as five right now, and towards each other. Bobby Shimmerta and Boofy Crackers are the ones who might get spotted out. A good little poke, bit of damage, but the bandage shots does connect. Bobby Shimmerta in a bit of trouble. Flash still available, uses it to get over the wall. No follow-up flashes yet, as Calendale is actually surrounded. Does not matter. First blood going over to Wooby, and now League of York still might want to go in there. Runs into the bulk of the team, tries to back away. Bandage shots connecting, though, onto this Hecarim. League of York trying to run away, still has no flash, actually. Opted for the Ignite Smite instead, and as a result, Calendale once again, get first blood. I mean, and once again, it's a huge mistake from Marichidor. What Not watching for this invade. You know this team is going to do it. They did it last game. They're going to do it again. And yet they still just AFK. Wait, sit back in the brush. Sit around the buff. Don't look at those ward entrances. Don't wait for them to come through. And then Calamel just runs through. Takes them down very simply. Again, it's a movement early on with the bandage. Try to be able to take them down. And again, that's a big lead to Calamel right off the back. Kill going over to the Kaiser this time, which is mm. actually useful gold. Bobby Shimoda also dying as well. Um, but obviously the Karma goes back, gets an extra puddle, or <laughs> just backs for health. 
uh, which could be a little bit of a lead in, uh, for Tempo in the mid lane, but overall not going to lose anything. And that's really big for um, Calendale. There was also a bit of misjuggling right there on the blue puff side for Maruchidor as well. I saw it got reset, unfortunately. But what's critical about this, this time around, Calendale actually had the mindset to drop those wards. So they are completely aware that League of York is still stuck on this blue buff. So we were talking about how Tempo should be in this Hecarim side. He is already behind, and we're less than two and a half minutes into this game. And, and that's really not what you want as Marucho. I think this little setback is, is something that could definitely tip your mental the wrong way, mm -hmm. given the fact you're already down 0-1 in this series. See Fifa fan already zoning Taj McIntosh of CS on the top side, and it's already looking bad for, for Marucho. It's only into the game. They really need to reset their mental, ignore that first spot, and just play the game. Yeah, I mean, we're not even three minutes in yet, so the game is far, far, far from over. But Fifi Fan taking advantage of that early level two, just throwing so much damage down onto Taz McIntosh, chasing him back underneath the tower. And I feel like this is going to be the theme of the top lane, unfortunately, for Marucci Dor. Just Fifi Fan is so good in this top lane matchup that he is going to have a field day. Yeah, I mean, especially in the Darius into the slam, he's got the melee range, you should be able to get his, um, the claw onto the, uh, I apprehend, sorry, onto this uh, Sion over and over again and make it very difficult for Tyson to really do anything. I mean, it's going to be a big matchup between these things. Already got a level advantage, already like 17 CS to 5, right? Yashi Orms coming up for it. The charm does connect from Bobby Shimurda, but that just buys enough time for the band shot. League of York looking for that re-engage. He's going in very deep and it's quite low already. Yaki Orm just has to stand there and let his AoE do the work. A good little snare coming out of Solji as well, but the charm, it does connect. It brings down Yashi Orm flashing under the tower as Solji, but doesn't connect with the abilities, so it's a one for one. I mean, that was a bit of an in flash there from Solji. Obviously, one for one's good. But, oh, sorry, Bombi Shimoda staying alive without the flash there in that mid lane, that Ari Glacial Augment uh, auto is big enough to just keep him alive. Unfortunately, could not. The flash there was kind of just a little bit wasted. Mm -hmm. Didn't get the kill off, wasn't able to pick up the kill on Bombi Shimoda, who was very, very low there. Um, TP available on Bombi, so I'd assume him. I mean, he's got double, actually, he's got double buff. He'll regen very quickly. It's huge for his lane, and getting those double buffs over is very bad. Um, mm -hmm. Or very. Not very good, especially. That's the biggest thing I hate as a mid laner when you're kind of even in your lane or you might be down a kill yep. or two, and then all of a sudden your jungler dies to their mid laner, and your mid laner comes up with a blue buff, and you go, ah! Uh, yeah, I. Uh, anytime the jungler comes to your lane and dies, even if it like might be passively your fault, you just just be like, ah, oh, that you know, this I would have been better off if now, you weren't right? here. Would have been better off if you weren't here. That said, the League of York still trying to make things happen. This time the target is Fifi Fan. They're Ooh, getting a considerable right. amount of damage done. Ghost is used before Flash as Fifi Fan is actually having to run towards the right side. Looking to turn around though, because Yogg's Yorn is making his way up. Fifi Fan buying time, still has that Flash available. Teleport actually being used by Bobby Shimurda. Should push Yogg's Yorn back. I'm waiting to see that charm, but it's not needed. Bobby Shimurda picks up the kill. Yeah, I mean, the, oh, uh, as well, the other thing as well from uh, both the Yorick and the um, the Yark, the League of Yark and the Slalom backing off there knowing that TP was coming in. Should have stayed around, even if one of them went down, I think one of them went down down. Bobby Shimoda would have picked up two kills, which is exactly what you want in your hyper carry Ari. A um, little bit of a um, misplay maybe in the top side, could have picked up an extra kill too. I really did like how Fefe Fan played that though, forcing the TP yeah. out from the Ari, right? Roam down, knew that uh, Amumu was coming, kind of played around that pressure, um, which is something we haven't really seen up in the top side from uh, Maruchi Door this game. Um, well, last game, I think, was the biggest thing, playing around that jungle. I think that's what Fifi Fan does really well, and a reason why he's able to create such big leads. Yeah. Raptor Cloak, though. Yeah, going for the Raptor Cloak. Are we going to be seeing a first by ZZ Rush? Is the ZZ Rush Rush? Is it going lane? to be the ZZ Rush side lane? What I mean, else? I mean, it could be a, um, uh, what's it called? The... Why oh, I never name this item? It's an item I can always righteous glory. Righteous glory, yeah. I always forget it. Then it could be righteous glory. I don't know if there's a righteous glory. I, think I mean, righteous glory would make sense. I feel as if you know, if you're going ghost righteous glory, yeah, you, you have a you have a game plan in mind right there. Yeah, I mean, Darius's weakness as a champion, while you don't see it in pro play a lot, is because he struggles to engage. Right? Mm -hmm. He's not very good as a tank because you kind of have to sit back in the front line and kind of. Um, he gets bursted too quickly, he doesn't have that much damage. And the biggest thing is that he can't really get on top of characters if he doesn't, doesn't get in range for his apprehend. Um, and that's why he kind of is only a tank fighter. And he's only really strong in these 1v1s in the top side matchups. Once he comes out of lane, he's kind of useless. But 
If you have the uh, the ghost up, you have a, a, a righteous glory. Right, glory. Phase can, rush. Phase rush as well, right? You can get in, maybe run through this team and through the back line and maybe be effective. But I think his forms of engage is very interesting. He's actually going to be looking for this 1v1 right now. He's level 6 into the level 5 Tosh Macintosh, who stepped forward. A bit of a misplay there. The Gullatine should be coming down soon. Meanwhile, in the jungle, Yoxi Orn and Yiga Yorick are going back and forth. Charm does connect as the Gillotine did bring down Tosh Macintosh. Solji is trying to get the root down. Bobby Shimmer in a bit of trouble. Prince Philo unable to help with the follow-up, yet they're still looking perhaps for this dive. Wobby has roamed up as well. Instead, though, they see that Mountain Drake. That's more the priority. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, bot lane priority wasn't there for, uh, for Marichidor, so they couldn't get anything on the... Uh, um, also, it missed the, the, uh, the, the uh, essence or the Q <laughs> there from the Ori. Um, just because simply, it's a classic when you stun the charm and they walk around the wall back to you and you throw the Q straight, expect them to just walk at you. Uh, that's a big thing on Ari. I hate that it happens to you. Oh, I got him on the charm, let's throw the Q. And they've walked around the wall. Great. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you for that, right? Rather than just walk through the wall. But uh, no, missing the Q there means a lot of damage is missing that Orb of the Deception, um, mm -hmm. which means obviously really. Uh, I mean, we get to stay alive there. It means that top lane kill is so much more worth it um, for the yeah, I mean, going back to the top lane as well, Taz McIntosh just stepping forward when he was a level down, a bit of a misjudgment, I suppose, in understanding I mean, where the lane was he at. He kind of got chased by the, the Darius and tried to dodge forward and then ordered the minions and then ordered the Darius and then took a cannon plus like six castles of aggro and then he got the bleed stacks on him because he had to walk back to his tower and it was kind of just like, what do I do here? I think maybe the Raptor Clock was just for an, a little bit of extra speed. Like if York looking for an opportunity, but still not level six yet, the charm going wide as well. I do like how League of York is trying to play aggressive on this mm. Hecarim. We're seeing a lot more ganks out of him this time around than we've seen in the previous game. Unfortunately, they haven't really been connecting as of yet. Yeah, I think that's the one thing about Hecarim, right? When you don't have any gap closes on a jungler, it's very hard to actually get in and make a gank happen, which is why stuff like Lee Sin is always good. Elise is really strong right now as well because he's able to just get in easy CC, easy lockdown. Uh, Rek'Sai was strong for a while because of that. You see, when you're really strong junglers, if they're not over buffed like the Hecarim, which is why the one he's strong he's got such mm -hmm. good numbers. You need something to actually initiate a gank, and I don't think Hecarim's gank, uh, gank pathing uh, or um, gank initiation is really that effective if you're rewarding the gank. Exactly, and also you sort of need that mid laner to help you out as well. Yeah. And Ari is so critical in hitting that charm. Like, if it doesn't hit, unfortunately, you're definitely not going to be able to bring down a Karma. No. You have to be able to hit that ability. Meanwhile, on the bot side, a good little dodge of the bandage toss coming out. Boopy Crackers, but Snoopy on his own has to flash defensively. Wally is actually going in. No, it's an easy chrono shift and then pin to the wall, but guess what? League of York's on the other side, so Wally will go down. Boopy Crackers dropping that final hour, looking for some more kills as well, trying to run Yoxiorn down. League of York's there to help, but too fast from Kyle Vale. Still a nice pickup. I mean, I think I want to comment on if you look at this little topside trade again is the amount of default skins we're seeing in this game. I'm actually mm -hmm. liking the, I don't think there's many actual skins in this game. So you're seeing the, the <laughs> champions in their really cool element as League of Legends designed them to. Not a lot of skins here. So. No, it's everything is it's very I think I've played many games where there's not been any, it's just all been base skins. Yeah, it's actually nice to see. I mean, I've gotten more used to some of these base skins. Thank you, TFT. Like, seeing a base yeah. Darius is more usual for me, but yeah, same things like the base Scion, um, the base Vayne as well, as Taz McIntosh just walks right into some more harass. Unfortunately, Scion, very low, is going to need some help as soon as possible. And that's, that's I think that's probably the ninth time that exact same interaction has happened there from Taz McIntosh on the top side. I like what League of York is right now. If TP fan isn't careful, he is going to get jumped upon by this hacker. I think Taz is just too low, and I think with the um, the execution of it, still he's going for it though. He is going for a Fifi fan though. Yeah, doesn't fall for the trap, so he will be fine. Yeah, I think yeah, that can was a little bit ambitious from Yog. I think he just need, he needs to play on this bot lane. He needs to get this Vayne fed. Vayne's gonna carry you, this Ari's gonna carry you. Don't go to top side. It's 90 CS to 28. To 20 oh, I didn't even look at that before, but 90 CS to 28. That is a humongous lead for the Darius. He must be up like at least two, three K gold, right? Because mm -hmm. I mean 15 CS is basically the same gold as a kill. So he's maybe up four kills. Uh, on the Taj Magnum Pulse, that was a kill. I think that entire gold that you can see in the top side is all because of uh, this lead that Fifi Fan has. Yeah, I think, yeah, the entire lead of this game right now is entirely on Fifi Fan, but taking a couple tower hits might leave him exposed. League of York doesn't want to risk it though. It could go wrong so quickly, even when double buffed. But here comes Taj McIntosh. He could be looking for an entrance. He has the ultimate available. The yeah. Ensemble Onslaught. I Ensemble definitely Onslaught is there. It. But Yawk's I still think they, win the, well. they still win the 2v2, I think, with Darius that works. I think they might, but Yoxalm is still trying to find a way in. You also can see Solji making his way down, trying to find a way in. I Mergidor not wanting to take the fight. They're gonna back away from now, but 
with these little skirmishes continuing, like, I do respect the fact that Merchidor has sort of pegged PKP. I was like, okay, this is getting out of control. We need to stop this or we are going to lose. But they have to actually, you know, make the calls to try and stop it. Yeah, I think they just... They're again, you're seeing this uh, confidence lack of uh, lack of confidence from Taj McIntosh. Mm -hmm. Probably why he's also so far behind in CS. Just not being able to, not like confident or not knowledge in how to play the champions or how mm -hmm. these 2v2s go. Not having like confidence in his jungle either to kind of go for these more aggressive plays, which he needs to kind of go for. It's kind of looking like their downfall as well. I think they just need to ignore the top side, play on this bot side, make sure you're strong where you're strong. This is what they're doing now. Yeah, exactly that. Here comes Liga York. The target will be Prince Philo. He quickly burns Splash, but still gets condemned into the wall. A wild growth coming out very prematurely. Final hour as well used by Boofy Cracker. So ultimates left, right, and center, but nothing happens. No, nothing as a result of that. It's just cooldown burnt here. And the top side here could look very dire here. Flash out of McIntosh. Yeah, McIntosh has to use that flash. He just cannot step near this Darius anymore at this stage of the game. I almost feel as if he'd be better off, you know, going mid lane and maybe acting as just like another support to Bobby Shimmer and just be like, you know what, top lane's yours. You can have it. Yeah, just I'm give, out. Up, give it up. Just buy a uh, relic shield. <laughs> Sit down in the mid lane. Maybe you get some gold. I mean, to be honest, if he genuinely got like a uh, a coin here and just didn't see us, he'd be getting more gold than he would be from actual CS. Yeah, I think that might be the call. Meanwhile, this Cloud Drake should be easily secured by Maruchidor. A bit of a misstep actually out of Calumvale to sort of let that one slip by. Mm, yeah, I think that's a huge, I mean, they have got so much top side control and haven't got much bot side control. It's kind of even down there. Um, I still think, you know, obviously Ruby and Prince Galo back on these same trade again is very strong. First part going down to the Darius. Unstoppable good. onslaught good. used on full health to run away. Yeah, that's, uh, I mean, if he got caught by that apprehend, I think he would have been dead for the count there. Ghost was up as well. Well, you can use it after. I mean, maybe, <laughs> sure, but like, I still think getting yeah. away from apprehend saves a bit of damage. Um, you don't want to risk it, right? You don't want to see yeah. him. You don't want to risk it. Polly Shimoda, though, he wants a kill. Here comes League of York. Yoxilum there as well. The Banish Toss does hold in place. Curse of the Sad Money oh. is dropped. And down goes League of York. Bobby Shimoda has to flash defensively or else he might get run down. It doesn't appear as if Yoxilum is going to continue pushing it. As Feifei Fan continuing this top lane shove, we might be seeing the Flame Horizon in under 15 minutes. Yeah, that's a great uh, combo there. Oh, he's tower diving. He's actually looking for it, but he's taking a lot of abuse. Teleport coming through, and the bleed. the bleed will get the kill, but Bobby Shimoda does want a bit of retribution. He's Blasting gone. Cone is there, though, so Fifi fans should escape. Yeah, good control. Was, you see the warding here is going to, sorry, the ward line from Calumvale is moving up here. This Darius complete taking over this top side. And this uh, this Lulu and, and uh, Kaiser are sitting so happy right now. Calm in the middle as well. They go, look, maybe the hyper carry Darius is what we want to play right now. Black Cleaver is completed. He's going to be shredding no matter how much armor that this high can build up, uh, which is at the moment very minimal, right? He's got no gods. He's very little he can actually do. Um, it's just, this, this game is, is very difficult, I think, for Muriju to come back from. I don't think mm -hmm. Bane's going to be in a stage to take down this Darius until this Kais is online. And there's just, once these, I think the biggest thing Camavella do is they don't lose. They just go even. Even mm -hmm. this mid lane, they're just moderating it. I think Yoxi Orn has some great counter ganks in the mid lane to kind of stop uh, yep. the Karma from falling behind. Because, like, I think there's three times that if, if the move wasn't there, Solji would have gone down. Yep. Uh, and that would have been, uh, you know, maybe a five kill Bobby Schmerda, which means we could definitely be something that we can play around and come back in. <laughs> this Ari is still quite strong, but I think against a Darius, it's a Darius that's this big this early, it's been very difficult for him to do anything. Yeah, very much the case at the moment. I kind of want to see Calmville at this stage actually start pushing for that Rift Herald right now because they have that much control over the I top mean, yeah, side. I mean, yeah, even the Rift Herald, maybe even drop it. I mean, maybe after you get the kill on Clash uh, Magnodosh on the top side, or we'll force him out of lane, you can drop it up there, grab an inhibitor at maybe 20 minutes, and if you get an inhibitor pre-20, that's pretty much a death sentence, right? Because the, the super minions are pretty Ooh. much impossible to kill at that stage in the game. Um, and, you know, you're pretty much going to have to keep the vein in the base, in the top side, clearing out those supers until that despawns. I mean, as you move your Darius around, that means it's, at that point, it's so much better, right? I have been liking... Every time we come to bot lane, though, Boofy Crackers is trying to make something happen. I think yeah. I've seen Prince Philo condemned into the wall about four or five times now this game. So I feel as if the mindset is not completely gone out of Maruchidor yet. Yeah. I feel there are still, you know, their playmakers trying to make things happen. I can almost guarantee you that's been Bobby Shimoda calling for those ganks in mid lane, trying to be like, get me going. And here we go. This is what I mean. Final hour and flash forward out of Boofy Crackers. But Wooby is turning it around. So much damage. Fortunately, a chrono <laughs> break is there to save this vein, at least for now. But League of York is already down. A good bit of healing coming down. We'll save Boofy Crackers from now. The health 
used successfully, but in the top side, tower going down, and with not much available, Taj McIntosh, look at the positioning from Fifi Fan. He's not allowing the unstoppable onslaught. He doesn't want Taj McIntosh to escape, and the guillotine cuts down this Scion. I mean, this Darius is just so far into this top side, and the bot lane, just pure desperation there. Flash forward, final hour, all ultimates used and just missed because the Zubi and Philo are playing back, playing safe, not getting caught out. Uh, learning the cooldowns, maybe Bombi Shmurda can take up with Yeah, the here, charm but... connects, he has a chance. Fifi Fan waiting to try and sideswipe, oh, but instead, no, decides to go in. League of York should help secure this kill. So much damage and healing though on a Fifi Fan. We're seeing the challenging smite come down, but with the ghost, look how fast Darius can go! Run, Darius, run! And <laughs> Fifi Fan gets away. That is just heartbreaking here from Ruchidor. Everything used, and he still just gets away. The phase rush plus the ghost means he's so strong, just runs away the healing on that, um, the, the spin as well is just ridiculous, and this Darius is not going down, not dying. 158 CS to 54 CS at 17 minutes. I don't, like, this game is looking, this game in this series is looking very dire. This is looking well. so dire for Maruchidor. I want Darius's 100 yard dash time. I want to see if he's giving Usain Bolt a run for his money right now, because in full-fledged armor, he's booking it at that speed? My goodness, man. I mean, he, he would easily be winning the Olympics. That is oh, an yeah. incredible time to run across half of Summoner's Rift. Yeah, that was insane, and I just feel as if that might be that dagger to the heart of Maruchidor's confidence. Like, they cannot stop this Darius, and it is just going to be getting worse and worse as this game continues. I still would like to see Calumvale go ahead and pick up that Rift Herald. There's only about two minutes left before it's replaced by Baron, yeah. and there's no reason for them not to. I mean, you've got so much topside pressure. Fifi Fan not even getting anything bonus. Well, have got the phase speed as well in there, and he's 100-yard dash, dash time. Maybe instead of Silent Science Video, he should have Darius here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would be a lot of fun to watch. At the moment, though, Acton seems to be rotating more towards the bot side of the map right now. Calumvale, I think they recognize top's already won. Maybe we can get bot going. A lot of pings as well. Mid laners roaming down. This actually could be Yoxium in a bad situation. He's looking for that engage at the present. He's able to actually zone away Maruchidor in the 1v3 situation. League of York trying to find that re-engage. Take a look at where Solji is. He's kind of stuck in no man's land by that Cloud Drake right now. Bobby Shamid is probably looking for that charm. Meanwhile, up top, I mean, Fei Fan is doing what he can. The charm hits, but here comes the return. Bandit shots, Curse of the Sad Mummy, holding Mercy Door in place as here comes Prince Philo as well to provide some more shielding, more CC, and a kill for this Lulu. Bobby Shamirda has to use the ult defensively to escape. Meanwhile, in top, yeah, Fifi Fan, sure. Let's just watch him farm some more. Let's just watch him get to 200 ahead before 20 minutes. It's absolutely ridiculous, you know, like this, as for Maruchido here, it's going to be so, like, you have to come back in this game, it's 19 minutes into this game and there's already a Darius killing your inhibitor. You need to get the Vayne out of this lane, you need to get the Vayne to stop this Darius, oh, get Taj back and Josh again. Oh, the Orbit Deception going wide, wide left, also not connecting with the slow as well. Fei oh, Fan yeah. is looking for the 2v1 kill, it's already brought one down, but Wooby on his own actually gets soloed, it appeared by Boofy Crackers, and Fifi Fan going in way too deep dies as well. A bit of overconfidence perhaps out of Columbale. I mean, it's 19 minutes and he's dying under the Nexus Towers, and he's not <laughs> inting. Like, yeah. what is going on here in this game? This Darius is so huge. Big shot down over to Bombi Shmurda, so that could be something he can try to pull back. But with this Glacial build, this is not a hyper carry Ahari. This isn't mm -hmm. an Ahari that's going to take your gold and your items and go, hey, I'm going to throw it in your face, let's 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 start playing. Because he, he's definitely going to go for his Zonyas here, right? If I'm the Ahari, I need his Zonyas, or this Darius is going to just insta-kill me. The Scion here is going for a... a, 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 a what's it called? A, a Ice fist? A uh, fist? Ice frozen born. fist? Iceborne Gauntlet. Yeah, we can't call it Frozen Fist anymore because that's a new item. Is it? I used to call it Frozen Fist. Well, Frozen Fist is the one item for... Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, well, yeah, it's the Iceborne Gauntlet. Call it for, but yeah, Iceborne Gauntlet here, which I don't think is optimal against a Darius. Like, full mail, man. We need... <laughs> Darius even DC, and like, didn't even... Like, something like, ours is fine. Do you think he just... Four, right, do you think that's five, why he died there? He maybe. just right-clicked the enemies and just dc like, yeah, yeah, I got this. I'm gonna go. <laughs> oh, that four look. Getting the paint up like Wonder did in the LCS. Just, yeah. What is this? <laughs> I have an assignment to finish, so I'm just going to get started on that, guys. Don't worry. I right-click their Nexus, so he'll be fine. Uh, Cloud Drake started by League of York. He's going to get caught out. Nowhere for him to go. Thank you for the leash, Merge Door. Callendale securing that Cloud Drake. Meanwhile, Fifi Fan, oh, no. he has his eyes set on Bobby Shimmerda now. Let's see how he goes against this Ari. Things are looking pretty good. Ghost has been proc. He's running so fast past everyone. Finally decides to possibly slow it down a bit. Wait for my team. Banner Shots going so deep after Bobby Shimmerda. Not able to bring down this Ari as people start to retreat. Yeah, and got condemned out of the tower from Bridget Tracker as well. Just, I think 
It's just desperation, doubt, knowing what do we do here. We're just so under the pump from Maruchador. Already, you know, 7, 8k gold behind. Kais is one-shotting. The uh, Karma is super fed as well. It's just... It's a case of I'm just being struggled. I don't know what to do. How can we win oh, this game? Oh, bandage toss on to Snoopy. Gets the kill. Solji picks one up. And here comes League of York. Yeah, 1v3 Desperation Ultimate. League of York does survive, but gets chunked down so low. The rest of the team cannot follow up. And the siege in mid lane will continue. I mean, what can Maruchido like, do to come back into this game? I think the only way you can really see him coming back is a miracle balance deal into stalling out, into getting this vein fed. And maybe if Fisher Fan maybe turns off his computer. Yeah, I think I think those are the biggest ways to come back in this game. Oh, charm onto Solji actually does quite a bit of damage. It still appears that Calumbell want to keep pushing. You take a look at the mini map. Phoebe Pan has backed away from top lane for now. It's looking to get some vision control. Charm, big one, him to Wooby. This could be a dead Kaisa. League of York though is unable to bring him down. Unstoppable onslaught misses as well, and Wooby pulling things around with a double kill. Yes, Tosh McIntosh might try to get something from the grave and does zone Zolji away, but Yelji is not needed. Wooby is doing all the damage himself. Final hour is placed. Wooby Cracker step forward, and Snoopy does get the kill onto Wooby. Yeah, Snoopy gets the kill on the Wooby there. Wooby uh, using both summoners to get out the Snoopy Wooby. <laughs> Snoopy Wooby do. Where are Snoopy you? <laughs> Dying on the rift now. Anyways, um. <laughs> oh no, please, an encore, <laughs> man. Just give me more, baby. No, but um, I mean, here, Boofy Crackers, uh, not Boofy Crackers, Snoopy able to pick up the kill. I mean, they're just, how long they're just so far. These players are going down, they still have gold bannings on his head. This cast is super fed, does so much damage with the uh, uh, passive stacks on the PTA. I mean, it's just, what do you do here if you're Marichidor? They're just so far behind. 9k got at 22 minutes. They're just being suffocated out. Once this Baron goes over um, to Calumbell, I think this Darius is near unstoppable. Yeah, definitely does appear the case. I mean, Darius is already near unstoppable now. It's like, when does he try to go for the 1v5? I feel like it's happening soon. A 10k lead in Calumbell favor. I, I, I think he can 1v5. I think Vayne and Arya are still strong enough that they can kind of stop it. I think unless he maybe he gets on top of them early on or gets it like a three-man apprehend, yeah. maybe. I don't think he's that strong. And Darius does fall off as well, right? So I just think the way their comp's built this, once the Darius starts falling off, this price is going to be so strong. And that's what won on that first game. Yeah. As we see another opportunity right there. Bobby Shimmerda ultimate drop, but goes right into Yachtimun. Good bandage toss. Forces Bobby Shimmerda away, but all of a sudden, this Amubu might be the target. Lee of York does not want to commit as Wubi has joined the fight. He tries to go in a bit too deep, and down he goes. Oh. A big curse of the sad mummy does proc the Chrono Break oh, out of Snoopy, but it will only do so much. Sorry, Chrono Shift. <laughs> I, I, I get to mix up all the yeah. time. Is it Chrono Shift, Chrono Break? That's Chrono something or other. <laughs> They're both time champions. Should be right. Yeah, it'll be fine. The point is, Snoopy and League of York are down. Callan Bale. Still five members strong. They are looking to punch their ticket to UQ itself. They want to play in the Chanel Theater, and this could be the push that sends them there. Yaxiorn rejoining with his team. He's going to be looking for that engage. Bobby Schermader trying to do what he can from the side, trying to find a way in to the knuckle. That is this Calumbale team caught. BP Pan looking for a possibility to step forward. Trying to buy some more time. The inhibitor has gone down, and there's a big wave pushing on the top side as well. Calumbale looking to reset right now, or are they setting up the trap? I think Calumbale either can set up the trap, wave for that huge wave to crash top side and get the kick Oh, this could be it right now. A big them. charm and a bit of a snipe actually going down onto Prince Philo. But it doesn't matter. Fifi Fan has already taken down, it appears, both the Scion and the Hecarim. League of York just barely escaped, but a huge condemn into the wall takes down Wooby, and with that, Calumbale actually has to run away. I mean, that's a big moment there for Marichidor. Slowly starting to get back in this game. That's oh, Bobby Shimmerda wants more. Oh, he go. wants to get to Solji. The shutdown does go over, but now he has to escape from Yuxiorn. This Ari a bit fast on her own feet, so four kills for Marichidor. And there you see the plays from Briefy Crackers and Bobby Shimmerda. Bobby Crackers 2 0 4 on his main Rage Blades, also completed on him. So he's starting to really ramp up and get a lot stronger, which is one of Darius' weaknesses, right? He can't get mm -hmm. on top of these carries because Vayne and uh, Ari have so much mobility. And he put it down, which is a big weakness. And I think once this Baron goes over, it's going to be a lot harder to finish to uh, get this final push. The Starix Gauge completed on the Darius as well makes him even stronger. But I, there is still hope, right? If Maruchidor can get one of these fights in your base, it's much easier to win, right? Mm -hmm. It's uh, a little tree points have to walk through. You got a lot more towers in there as well to take the damage off. I think uh, maybe another curse of the side money from Euro, Euro, uh, Yoxiron could be really uh, devastating here for uh, Maruchidor. I think. <laughs> it's a banish yeah. miss over the wall there. The Infernal Drake as well is not what you want to see as Marichidor. That's just uh, yeah. insult to injury. A Mountain Drake as well. This Kaiser will pretty much one hit the Baron yeah. as well. 
Uh, so I think they kind of have to give that up. And they just got to hope for another big team fight in their own base. And maybe another two or three of those. And then maybe they start to get back to this game and let Boofy Crackers and Bobby Shimoda take over the end and carry. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there is a chance. Bobby Shimoda is sitting 6 1 and 2. Did pick up the Morella Nomicon as well. So we'll be able to cut into that's some of that sustain. Darius, yeah, right. exactly. Cutting into the sustain out of Fifi Fan. That's going to be very critical. Right. Baron has been started right now. Bobby Shimoda is actually the one who might contest the steal. Goes in. Unfortunately, he's unable to bring it down. Callumdale secures the Baron. Yeah, that means pretty much expected right now. Only Yorick! Oh. Not where you wanted to be. Two ultimates burned already out of Maruchi door. Oh, Bobby Shimurda tries to step forward. BP fan possibly thinking about running it down. Ghost not available at the moment for this Darius. So a lot of his engage has been neutered. But as five, I feel as a Calumbale, they don't need to reset. They're going to try and end right now. I mean, they definitely have the potential for the Karma ultimate as well. So much damage in shielding. This is the only lane they really have to worry about. Obviously, top lane is always defended by uh, Boofy Crackers, but... I mean, if they can get a nice pick onto one of these key carries uh, from Rucho, I'm pretty sure that's the end of the game. So, well, Brufy Crackers and Bombi Shimoda have to make sure they're staying alive unless they're getting an ace. Yeah, but it's going to be so hard because Flash is currently down on both of them. Yeah. So one misstep, they lose. They have like no escape abilities, especially with the ultimate down for Bobby Shimoda as well. Like, I feel Calumvale, they can pull the trigger at any opportune moment for the next wave or possibly two, but instead it's Bobby Shimoda who's stepping forward looking for something yeah, to drop the on the top side, so they haven't got that five minute strength in the mid lane. I think Snoopy needs to go with base before we get to this fight. Actually, though. everyone is kind of roaming up to Fifi Fan, who is on his own, condemned to the wall, already down to half, but flashes oh. in, gets so much of that health back. He doesn't go for the 1v3, he wants the 1v4 instead, still looking for Bobby Shimoda. Third guillotine goes down, a quadra kill for Fifi Fan, and that is what is going to take Callum Bale to the University of Queensland and to this live semifinals. Yeah, what a play there from Fifi Fan. You see that Darius is so fed that Morella and Omicron is trying to reduce his damage. Doesn't do anything when he flushes in with the guillotine, gets a reset on that ultimate, and there goes the next thing. Callum Bale win 2 0. Callum Bale making a statement out of this quarterfinal. They look so strong in this one. And normally we'll have a discussion on who we think this MVP is. Fifi fan, all right, done. I mean, yeah, both, <laughs> both games, he was by far the reason I won that game. Yeah. I mean, Wooby did very well as well. He could have an honorable mention, but I think Fifi fan obviously just destroyed Taj McIntosh in that top matchup. And that was the biggest difference between these two teams. We saw some highlights uh, from yeah. that last game as well. Most of it can be Fifi fan, just don't. Yeah, that Darius was an absolute monster. Fifi fan making a statement. And I had him as a question mark coming in. This is like, okay, this guy I'm pretty sure is a jungle main. Yeah. Doesn't really play top that much. Is he going to be able to like, you know, handle this? Maybe he'll get thrown on tank duty and be a very good tank. Nah. Put him on the Darius. Let him 1v4 let him 1v4 to take us to the semifinals. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the biggest thing for Calum. But I think, no, 100% they've assured themselves we are an undefeated team and we are a damn good undefeated team. Yes. And KG4 should be looking worried because Calum Bell are coming for that top spot. Exactly. I mean, there was a lot I liked about them, especially in that second game. I felt they were playing a bit more controlled than in game one where mm. they did get caught out a bit much. Like, Fei Fan in particular did get caught out a couple times on that rise. Yeah. But... And that did carry over a little bit in the game too, not as much. So there are weaknesses on this Calumbale team, but if they play safe like they did, play yeah. around one lane and just sort of work the map through that and play through that, then my goodness, this team has potential to take the whole thing. As we're going to go to our first highlight, this was, you know, Darius making the run for his life. Yeah. Giving Usain Bolt a challenge for his money as we should be cutting over to that replay now. I have never seen a Darius go this fast. No, it's a very fast Darius, and of course you've seen the righteous score running in Darius. Oh, I mean, yeah. I, actually, I've seen some fast Darius in my time. True. I mean, during Earth, I oh, saw yeah, everyone, was, everyone was fast. Everyone's fast in Earth. There's no, everyone's speed in Earth. I think, mm. I mean, I definitely, oh, here we go. You see the highlights coming in. He's going to be running away. <laughs> yeah, here we go. I mean, especially with the slow to start off as well. He's just, you know, slow start, slow and steady, wins the race. Here comes Yorick. Solo, good heal, then boom, Ghost Proc. And that healing as well was just so much damage. <laughs> so much healing coming back, just simply runs away from a Hecarim as well. I mean, I definitely want to say, I think Yoxion and um, Solji are hugely understated in these games. Obviously, mm -hmm. the carry obviously had the bot in the top lane, but I think these two characters played a huge role in their victory. I think Yoxion was fantastic that oh second my gosh, game. Yes. He had so many great counter banks, and his actual jungle ability was yeah. very, very good. I think he, like, I think he was probably the second best player on the team, despite yeah. the fact that Wooby had to some highlight plays. I think his counter ganking was absolutely essential to making sure that Bobby Schmetter didn't get ahead. And mm -hmm. I also liked how um, Slurgy was able to sit back yeah. and, and not get um, taken over by this platform one mid laner. Yeah, that said though as well, Maruji Dor did have some key moments in this game. It wasn't yeah. all doom and gloom. There was times when it looked like maybe they could get something going. 
maybe it's a case of Callum Bale overstepping where they should have been, but there was some good defense, as we can see right here. This was the push that I thought possibly could have ended it, but Maruchidor did fight back. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a big mistake here from Callum Bale as well. Right now, you should just reset, get the Baron, push down the top and the mid lane with your uh, big Darius, but they sort of said, he would have been, look, I'm super strong. I want to go for the end right here, right now. Mm -hmm. I want to get my semi-final. I'm sorry, yeah, my semi-final ticket. Unfortunately, the vein was strong enough to be able to force him back at the final hour as well. So much damage with the Rage Blade just freshly completed on her, or about to be completed. <laughs> uh, and the Ari as well with the uh, slows. Sorry, slows was able to chase him down. Yeah, I mean, definitely also a good case of a bit of overextension. Going back to the point you were making before, though, with um, Yoxiorn. Yeah. I feel actually Yoxiorn may have been the best player. Mm. On the team, even though Fifi Fan, yes, was super. I mean, far ahead. he was the carry, right? He, he was, was the, the MVP. One that got the big feed, but I think in these future games, we don't have this huge top side advantage. To exactly. Play through, I'm looking I at Yaxi Yorn. Yeah, I'm looking I mean, at him in the future. I, I just think that, I mean, Fifi Fan obviously had a very nice match from the top side. They mm -hmm. had, you know, a bronze one or bronze two, or bronze three player versus a gold one player. There's obviously a big skill gap there, and it was, like, you could see, very mm -hmm. easily exploited both games. Huge 90 CS leads by like 10 minutes, which is nuts, which is something you're never really going to see. Uh, in your solo queue games, right? Yep. I always say you will see these solo queue I mean, games. No, that's exactly what you see. Yeah, here, but so. you won't see these in these like finals yeah. games. And I think um, Calumbo, although they did look very good, there's still some question marks there they still need to uh, answer for us. And I think, well, for me especially, I do think I want to see Fefe fan, Fefe fan play in when he's not completely dominant. Exactly. You know, he's playing against a, a top laner of similar, similar, uh, similar caliber, like the little kitten from last week. Mm -hmm. um, Obviously, he's not in the competition anymore, but he was definitely very Caliber good. of that level. Yeah, caliber of that forward. level, right, moving forward. It's going to be see how it can still go if that off-roll is a big thing and that skill discrepancy between bronze one and gold isn't there. Yeah, I definitely want to see that as well as we have one more highlight for you. This was the big one, the yeah. quadra kill that sent Callum Vale to the semifinals. I mean... I, we were joking about earlier, it's like, when is he going to do the 1v5 play? You're like, oh, I don't know if he can. He has to really get that good flash guillotine play. And then this was it. it. Like, this was fantastic out of him. Um, I believe we'll be cutting to it very, very shortly. Yeah, yeah here it is. All right. And, and then you see the rotation here from Callum Bell. They all backed off. And Maruchido kind of burst some cooldowns trying to chase him down here. We see Darius up on this top side pushing on the hippo, and they go, look. Let's go catch up this Darius 1v5. Mm -hmm. He's got no team here, right? But <laughs> easy here. They got the Morella Nomicon on the Bombi Shmurda, which could have reduced a lot of their healing. Unfortunately, couldn't get it off until the end, but that Sterix gauge prop coming in huge for him as well. It would just smash him down <laughs> the guillotine and just bang, bang, bang. Completely done. The uh, Penta stolen away by the uh, team. By Yoxo in there. Yeah. But yeah, that I mean, was a big play by Darius. It would have been the Penta. If yeah, Calumbale definitely. didn't rotate up to try and help out their top oh, laner, that would have been the 1v5 Penta. I mean, the craziest thing about that, too, is I remember like going into it like, oh, I don't know about this one. Snoopy's pretty low. They might not want to do it. And then pop goes the zillion before yeah. the ultimate can even be used. And just all that life regained back. And it was game yeah, over. I mean, the biggest thing that why he was able to get that 1v5 off was A, because he got the flash um, mm -hmm. flash spin on the... On, the, on, on four on, of them. On like, four of them, right? Yeah. Four or five of them. Got the bleed stacks down already. Mm -hmm. um, Insta killed the zillion, which gives you a, a, a second life, a second yeah. chance. Uh, also got the Ari as well. Uh, yep. Ari didn't get the Merle and Omicron propped out onto the Darius nope. fast enough to get all that health back with the uh, Spirit Visage, mm -hmm. uh, plus the um, Sterex Gage he had there. Yep. Uh, and then also uh, was able to just get those ultimate resets because he was already in the back line. The Ari couldn't get any further away. Used her ultimate already. Hecarim was just there. Just bang, bang. Good target used targeting on the ultimate, sorry, to get the fears off correctly to be able to uh, pick up all five kills. Yeah, it was eight. All four eight, kills. All four. Should have been five. Yeah. That's why Yoxi Orn isn't getting MVP. Not because, you know, Fifi Fan was popping off, but because he stole the pen to kill. Sorry, buddy, but no, no MVP for you. Crossing your name off. Shame. <laughs> Anyways, on that note, it is time to say goodbye to our broadcast, at least for this high school season. Because our next time you see us, we're going to be in Chanel Theater, perhaps. It's going to be the big live event, yeah. the semifinal. So the, the uh, big semifinals and grand final, we both be played on Saturday, the 20th of July, live here at the University of Queensland in the Chanel Theater. Um, both me and Max will be there casting all the mm -hmm. games for you today, and you'll be able to see uh, all of the teams winning yep. our quarterfinals today. Unfortunately, none of the series has finished yet, so we can't give you any other results. Um, but, you know, we should be posting them on Facebook or something yeah, like that we will. later. You will um, know who's playing. Don't worry exactly. about that. Exactly. Um, so, you know, if you're a fan of some of these players, you want to mm -hmm. come in, you're just a fan of League of Legends in general, it's a free event. Head over to the uh, UQU, UQU Esports Facebook page, pick up your free tickets now, and we'll uh, see you guys live there on the 20th. Yeah, February. it's going to be a lot of fun. Every game will be streamed. Yes. It's not like this one, we're only seeing one quarterfinal, we're going to be going in semifinal one at nine, semifinal two at, I believe, 12, 12. and then the grand final at three o'clock. So it's going to be a long day. 
A lot of League of Legends, but a lot of fun to be had. Yep. On that note, it is time to say goodbye. Thank you very much to the University of Queensland once again for allowing us to put on events such as this. Thank you to our participating high schools. Thank you, Mitch. Thank you, viewers. And we hope to see you next live. Have a good night, everybody. Good night.